There's money. Welcome back to the B stream here at the Six Invitational 2024 here live in Sao Paulo, Brazil. We are just over halfway through the day. We're going into our third matchup of the day. I'm Des. This is Tim. Tim, how is your Six Invitational 2024 going so far? I mean, how could it be going badly? Look at the games that we've had so far. It's been a pleasure, not just the SSG Wolves one, which I'm a little bit biased, but I think might have been the best one of the day so far. Mm -hmm. We've seen some absolutely cracking results along the way, which just happened. Be on your screen as if imagine that. Almost like the producer is listening to us on that one. Yeah, we had some really good stuff over on the A stream as well. We had G2 coming out the gates, absolutely swinging against NIP with a 2 0, a 2 1 for Dark Zero against GK. That finished just moments ago. We had a belter of a series between SSG and Wolves earlier on. And FaZe, as you'd expect, have just breezed past E plus Kia. So now we're into that second half of the day. On the A stream, you've got VP against Liquid, and we have got Falcons coming up against Lost, which for sure. It's going to be a really interesting game. I think for Falcons, we've heard about the roster issues. Loss, grand finalist, last major. Many look at this and say for loss, this is a clear and easy win. But you don't know with an SI, do you? It depends which loss turn up because, yes, they were grand finalists in Atlanta, but you've got to look a little bit further back. They actually didn't just go to last chance qualifiers. They dropped to open qualifiers in stage two before they made it back through to Atlanta. So it was kind of a little bit of a miracle run for them to get there. And then they had this amazing performance. So now, obviously, the question is, how do they go? But roster in front of us, of course, Falcons first of all to kick things off. As we've said, there has been, um, you know, a couple of switches in there. So we've got Bursa, <laughs> who's going to be stepping in. So we have to keep that in mind. It is not going to be straightforward for them. Uh, you know, they've got people that are just coming together with a couple of days notice to, to get this going. It's going to be a tough one. And that's not J-Lad. That is Leader, who we saw playing, I believe, last event. He was with GK. So it really has kind yes. of become the, the guy that everyone turns to and you need someone to step in for this one. But still, they're a team that are stepping in. The fun one with Bursa being Lost Academy as well. So there's that kind yes, of yeah, fun yeah. storyline here as well. Oh, he'll we'll know the all of these team. players for sure, yeah. You'd hope he would, at least to some degree, for sure. So either way, I think it's very fair to say expectations are... Uh, dimmed a little bit compared to pre-event but don't write them off we've seen crazy things happen when teams have stand-ins on the other side though we have loss let's take a look at their lineup as well as a reminder grand finalists at the last major it came out of seemingly nowhere many have called it a miracle run the big question around this team is can they do it again can they show that it was more than a flash in the pan tim well, last time around, obviously, in Atlanta, it was down largely to Lobin and Meyer. The other players, of course, facilitating them in the big numbers that they put up, but they really showed up. And the question is, can they do it if they don't have the same performance as somebody else is going to have to step in? Or will we see more of the same from Lobin and Meyer? That's what all the fans are going to be hoping for. I'm absolutely certain of it. So we will see once we get into the server. Like I said, this is going to be a bit of a funny game. I don't know how much of a true test of loss it's going to be with the roster issues for Falcons. But at the same time, I look at it and I say, well, you know what? Falcons are kind of... They've, they've got a bit of freedom here. You know, the expectations are low because they've got players coming in and, you know, players not there who normally would be. So, yeah, the expectations aren't there for them to come in and just, like, smash this. Don't forget, they've got Twister stood behind them, who's a very experienced Brazilian coach and, again, will know all of these players only too well. You know, I was um, covering Latam back in 2020. Twister was in charge of Furia and he was playing against all of these players. You know, he's played against Cameraman for years, for example. He knows mm. what his teams look like. He knows what kind of setups they're going to be bringing so you know you can't write falcons off just because they've had a couple of changes they can play with a bit of freedom no pressure just go in and see what you can do completely agree and again with it being invite anything can happen and admittedly in best of ones there is far more opportunity for craziness to happen but in best of threes you get a bit more stability you do get to see more of both teams map pools as well which i think is the exciting part you don't just see them on one map and then see them go home from there or simply not play again that day it is that full best of three series. Yeah, and I think that's where we're going to see some difficulty for Falcons. Is going to be, I think, if anything, if it was best of one, it'd almost suit them a bit more. They'd have that chance of just going in a quick sucker punch. Surprise, we've got it done. But yeah, they're going to have to do it over the longer period here. They're going to have to do it for the full stretch. And that is not going to be easy against this lost team. Absolutely. Well, I believe our map vetoes are almost ready as well. So let's take a look at exactly where we are going to. It's going to be Nighthaven Labs for the first one, picked up by Loss, meaning we're going to see Falcons start on the defense. We then go to Border, the map picked for Falcons, with Loss starting on the defense there. And finally, we close things out as our decider on Skyscraper, with Loss starting on the defense there too. 
So, three great maps. You know, Labs, Skyscraper, arguably my two favorite in the pool at the moment as well. We were speaking about this a little bit and saying, well, for Border, teams might pick that up, especially teams like Falcons where they've got stand-ins. It's a good map that tries to reduce things down to gunfights, almost like primitive siege in a way. Yeah, it's just if simple. you want to drag a structured team that has made it to a major yeah. final down to, air quotes, your level, Border's a really good map to do that on. Yeah, it's, it's dead simple. You're going to come in from one of two entry points. You're going to try to take the same map control generally each time. It's going to be rinse and repeat when you're on the attack. It's nice and straightforward, is Border. So I, it doesn't surprise me at all. I think it's a smart pick from Falcons there to say, you know what, we'll take that. Let's keep things simple. You know, let's not overextend ourselves. Um, Labs, again, I would say the same for Lost. It's a smart pick. Uh, I don't believe Falcons have played on it yet, or at least not that we've seen. I guess you could make the argument then that you haven't really seen what they're going to do, but they've got standings you're not going to know what they're going to do anyway so i think yeah take them there you know something a bit fresh for them something a bit new more complex more difficult i think it's a good choice from loss yeah i was going through and crunching all the kind of like previous maps that these guys have played and i was looking across you know maps like labs as well because it is one of the more fresher ones in the pool and you are right a top level play we have not seen falcons play this the other side of it is even if they had this is a very different team it's yeah that's, be... that's what i mean you've nothing yeah. to lose Exactly, yeah. It's and not, you're going uh, up against Loss on one of their go-to maps, and it's a little bit like, ah, uh, Nighthaven's probably going to be rough for Falcons, is my expectation. I, I think, think they so. do get that defense I start, so... I, I kind of get the feeling that the best three is going to hinge on border. Um, I'm sort of expecting um, a loss win on Nighthaven, and then I think it's going to hinge on border as to whether we see that third map one. I think, again, very fair expectations is that you'd say this is probably a 2-0 going the way of loss, but I've said it three or four times now. It is SI. You can't write in, anybody off. I exactly. There's a reason why you're one of the 20 best teams in the world and why you're here playing at this wonderful venue as well so far. It's it's the first day too. Some teams are really slow to start. We saw that from Wolves in our game early on as well. So we'll see how things keep going. So, I don't know. One good time. We'll be, and we will be back with you all in good time. We've just got a slight technical pause, so we're going to head out to a very short break. Don't go anywhere, and as soon as we can have you back into the action, it's going to be Lost versus Falcons. We'll see you real soon. On the line, there's glory on the line, and for teams that came in this event on the bubble, well, we'll wait and see if they're able to punch their ticket to Sao Paulo. でした。これはこれは。頑張れ。これどっから上がってきた自民会か。エリア コペンハーゲン終わっちゃったので、次はベスト<笑> Salut, c'est Shaiko et je suis entré fragger pour Team BDS. Ce que j'en pense, c'est que ouais, pour moi, je suis un gars normal qui joue juste aux jeux vidéo, quoi. Mais je le vois aussi quand même qu'il y a pas mal de gens qui me suivent, qui me supportent et tout, et ça fait quand même plaisir. Bah, les objectifs, c'est de bah, déjà d'essayer de, de gagner ce major actuellement à Atlanta. Et le gagner aussi, ça veut dire qu'on se, se qualifie au Six au Brésil. Du coup, ouais, ça serait, euh, ça serait incroyable. Mais il euh, y a beaucoup de, aussi de, de travail derrière, quoi, du genre. Euh. Comme j'ai dit avant, c'est genre beaucoup d'entraînement, quoi. C'est tout. C'est. Champions are here, and their trophy case still has a little more space. G2 is already locked and loaded. It's easy to win one competition, but trying to win more, that's the hard part, you know? I'm Jack Robertson, also known as Doki, and I'm the entry fragger for G2 Esports R6. A new generation pick up where legends left off. 
I want to keep going and be classed as the most achieved player in the game. I mean, I guess you could say we have a reputation of being seen as like the, the bad guy. Try to make one round today, John! Well, oh! Because every time we play, like we are screaming at the enemy team, just trying to get in their boots. I smell the fear, says Doki. Okay, it's game time. Yeah. Oh, we are the best at psychological warfare. It isn't even a question. Two, one. Oh, you're gonna crumble! G2, are they getting their first dub here in Swiss or is Scars about to pull off the upset? Oh, Scars. I'm gonna say good luck again to them. He's got another! He's absolutely nuclear to the third. Anyone oh. else wanna line up? Yo, Scars, you're terrible! This one is a foregone conclusion, I imagine. That's gonna be G2 onto a 7 and 1, cruising through their first game here in Swiss. Like, we, we won the first round in the game, and we typed in the game, like, GG. It's kind of bad manners, I guess, but that's called mental warfare. That's again, that's the win in the game before you even play. Even if you end up losing today, it's not the end of the world. Yeah, and the big thing to keep note of is that if you are ever in a best of three situation, that is elimination territory, and you have to win out if you want to qualify for the next phase. The only difficult game for G2 is W7, yeah? No, no, no. But I think the favorite to, to the major is G2. Not you? And me too. Yeah, of course. <laughs> All right, uh, good luck. I'll see you later. Day one of the Swiss stage yesterday. Two top ten teams finished dead last in the league, losing huge games. Hello. Salve, rapaziada. Eu sou o Herdes. Sou jogador da W7M. Eu sou entre Fregger. Most people universally have put W7M thinking that they will be the first ever back-to-back -back major champions. Are you gonna pop off on stage today? Pop off? Come on. Uh, ah, yes. W7M here in Copenhagen. No one could stop their rampage. Eu não vejo essa sensação de, de pesar. Eu já conquistei uma vez, eu já sei o caminho, como eu, eu consigo chegar lá. Both teams said that they're going to be fixing what they need to yeah. be fixed. This is going to be an in-your-face sort of game. I win, you lose. If you win, you get the chain. No, no, no. 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 This is going to be a lot of trash talk. Bateu o cabelo! Sua criança! Sit down to just one more, it's going to be a 3-3 half team. Really hard to call which way it goes. A gente é um time que trabalha muito e eu acho que isso é posto em prática nos campeonatos e tem dado resultado. Estou me sentindo muito feliz com essa vitória, acho que o time estava precisando aí para... Essa SG é sempre fácil, né? Sempre acho fácil. Né? Esperem a gente na final aí, vamos embora. Passa vergonha. Passa vergonha, acabação do índice. Então vem agora, então. Vem aqui agora. Ei! Não, não, não. 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 Fez que vem nessa família feliz nessa segunda <risos> temporada para tentar de novo ser, ah, ser lá, campeão. Ah, lá, ah, lá, vai correr atrás do papai. Oh, que sorriso. Acho que essa parte foi o que me ajudou bastante a, a evoluir Nossa, muito então, dentro do jogo. Ele é um amuleto pra gente, né? Querendo ou não, é, acho que ele me deixa eu mais com, com vontade de querer ganhar. Vou olhar para ele saber que ele tá ali me assistindo. Acho que estiga mais eu querer dar, dar, tá dando o meu máximo. O Major Suécia, eu quebrei, meu, quebrei o recorde né, de kills que teve em campeonato de Major. E no próximo campeonato que a gente jogou, que foi o Major Berlin, a gente, eu quebrei de novamente meu recorde, mas não fui campeão. Mas eu espero, se eu ganhar, conseguir levar ele pro palco e ajudar ele a levantar o, o, o Hammer junto comigo. E a gente vai trabalhar bastante para isso acontecer ou no Major ou no Six Invitation. Looks like Piers are on the way to their second win here. They beat Dark Zero last night, and they've got NIP on the ropes, raining body shots in, and it just needs that one knockout. And Piers will lock it down, and they go 2-0 here in the Swiss format at the Atlanta Major. Oh, <laughs> 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 I'm going to take a
It's been a year and a half since Dark Zero raised the hammer in Charlotte. This is a team. Welcome back, and thank you for sticking with us through that brief delay. We are almost ready for game, though. In case you are just joining us, as a reminder, this is Loss coming up against Falcons. Nighthaven Labs is our first map, Tim. Very excited to get onto that map. It's one of my favorites to cast at the minute as well. And given the history, Falcons, unseen on this map, could yet surprise Loss. Loss got a pretty good record. Three wins in the last four times they've played it over the last six months. Yeah, I'd expect them to come in here um, and, and lock it down pretty well, uh, given their past performances on there. And as you say, uh, you know, maybe a, a difficult one for, for Falcons to turn around a full prep for this with standings and everything in sort of a shorter space of time. But we'll see what happens. You never know in Siege. You put two teams in the server and anything can go. We're going to head right into our bands then for Night Haven Labs. And it's going to be Falcons up first to take an attacker. Absolutely. Cool. I mean, Falcons on the defensive side, it's probably the place to be if you really want to get anything out of this game, I think. It's going to be the first ban taken away. A go-to operator for many teams for several reasons. One, of course, great on the hard breach. Recently nerfed. It's now a four-second detonation time up from 3.2. Uh, but it's more down to the primary weapon that Ace runs around with, where you'll see entry fraggers normally running around on the Aces. Do your job, open up things you need to, and then get running around and looking for frags and assisting on the push forward into the map. So a very versatile operator. Ying, we have seen banned in every single map so far to date him. SSG banned it in all three of their games earlier. Lost, sticking with the trend, banning it away themselves, followed up by Tuberau. Okay, that's the first Tuberau ban that we've seen. Um, mm. I have watched the other games, so I've not always caught it has the banning been banned phase. I was going to say, I've not always caught the banning phase because we've been casting yeah. that. Um, but uh, yeah, so I think we will see a reasonable ban rate for Tuberau um, at the event overall. Valkyrie going as well. We saw some great Valkyrie use earlier on. Um, mm. in that first game that we did between SSG and Wolves. Uh, we saw the power of it. The camera's up above, Nitro's down below, and you know the rest. Um, so we're going to have absolutely none of that. Falcons will start things off on the defence then with loss on the attack, and we will be heading down to the basement to kick things off. It's going to be tank and assembly. Attackers need to locate and defuse bombs. Indeed it will be. Down in the basement, often see this assault coming into the walls on the south side. And that's where you'll see the vertical play coming in. Straight above it, you can see it above the site itself. Lovely angle straight down when you open up that soft flooring, which means it's very hard to come pushing in through the external facing walls without first getting control of the ground floor. So like so many other maps in Siege, it's almost like it's an idea of the design is to force right across multiple floors. How weird. You do have to get some first floor control in as well, rather than just going direct in towards site. Unless teams have got something particularly special coming up and seeing a Monty on side for dots, that could well be that special thing that I was referring to. On the other side though, Tim, a combo we haven't seen for, well, it's been months, of course we haven't seen it. Mute and Mozzie coming out here as well, playing really hard alongside the Solus into that information denial game. Yeah, it's going to be, as you say, a bit of a battle over storage to begin with. Uh, we've got a couple of Falcons players, it looks like, just hovering in and around there, trying to keep a hold of those verticals. And um, as you say, if you can do it, it stops you getting through the double wall there. Um, but it also uh, helps you keep hold of that wall if you... Trying to, but Dash is going to open things up onto Valentino, and that is not the start that Falcons will have wanted. Hmm. Always oh, 50 50 about seeing the Solus being the one getting involved in what essentially is a spawn peak there on towards Dash. Deals with it expertly. Now you don't really have that ability to control the map and restrict away the information game on the other side. And when your whole round strategy, because you have a Solus and a Mew and a Mozzie, is to deny information away from the attacking side, and you're losing one of those operators early on bit of a stinger. Normally you'd see someone like the Legion being the one trying to go aggressive in the early round in this case. So whether it's a misallocation of resource or it's simply Valentino just feeling a little bit peaky in his first game, they've so far paid the price in round one by dropping that away. You probably start seeing Falcons falling back here step by step as they chew through these mozzies, throwing new jammers that are on the way and they start lining up dots for a hit in towards that basement on the Monty because he will be the spearhead of this attack. Yeah, that's it. It's going to be about pushing the Monty. And the Monty there is, is really there for two things. It's to create space and to provide intel. You get in there, you bully players away from the position they're holding, um, and you call out to your team as you're doing it, those positions, so that they can make the challenges. Bursa puts to 
find himself one, but not going to be able to do it. Will dip away on the Fenrir, or will try to at least, but Dash is hot on his tail and manages to find that kill. Five versus three, and things going pretty well for Los so far. One minute 15 left in the round. They haven't got themselves established in a position to be able to execute yet, so that's going to be the next step, and that is a big, big moment in terms of that. Maya takes down leader, and that should give Los the space they need to think about getting this diffuser down. Yeah, Quibs gets something back for them, but at that point, it's a trade anyway. Maya's already done the damage. Leader is gone, and it's a 4v2. Damage here, really. Timby, in fact, there's a Monty on side. Does not make things easy. A second coming out for Quibs, though, as Lobin falls as well. Lost got to be careful here not to let things slip and lose members in silly ways. Yeah, this is it. Uh, I think throughout this map, it's going to be something that they need to just take account of and... Basically, when they've got that man advantage, don't let Falcons back into it. You know, really, um, keep tight, keep yourselves together, make sure you're there for trades. You've got the Monty kind of in alone at the minute. Dots is going to look to get this planted, but it can be held back from the breach potentially to make that Nitro challenge. It Ooh. goes out. The Diffuser does go down. Loss should be able to hold on to this, but it's not going to be straightforward. I don't know. Chris on a 3K He's feeling himself a little bit here. Tim with the Monty offline. It doesn't matter what the numbers are. They can still pull this one back around. Now going in for the disable as well. No one's nearby. Two seconds left. And finally, they get that vertical cameraman. Right place, right time. Daylight's going to try and do the same, but somehow I don't think it's going to work out for him. Nash is in on the backside. They get the easy close out there. A very good round coming out from the gridlock as well. Three kills, I believe, overall. Yeah, there were good moments in there for loss, but certainly opportunities given where they probably didn't need to be as well. Um, particularly, as I said, getting that plant down, there was three of them, they were very separate. You've got the Monty working through to the middle of site on his own. And because of the fact that you were working from just sort of, you know, Fairly small breaches from the hard breach gadgets. You're trying to peek that from the breach, but it was easy for the defender there just to create a little bit of space to get that nitro thrown out. That nitro goes out half a second sooner. The diffuser's down in the middle of sight and it's not yeah. activated and you're in trouble. So, Los, I think, you know, yeah, they got the job done, but they need to be careful that they don't give too many opportunities to Falcon. I think outside of the kind of freakish moments from Quibs there, though, they were in full control and nothing really threatened them too much. Yes, there's still all those there's close moments in every round of Siege, but fundamentally, still a pretty closey start, a closey start for the team at the pit this map and therefore start on the attacking side. Now we change things up though, we go up to the top floor, gonna see a mirror being brought along and a hard amount of denial. The bandit and, and the Kai coming through, the Electro Bros as we call them, does mean that Lost probably want to consider looking at something like a Thatcher here so far, not gonna be coming in. So I imagine they'll be doing some work downstairs here, getting control of that ground floor once again and making good use of the buck to get things blown out from below. So Valentino placing one of those F nats on the sort of garage walkway door there just to prevent them from getting walked in on. Now then, they got punished earlier on, but the Kaid's going to be sat on the electrical window. Out oh, comes the no! Nitro. <laughs> it's the oldest trick in the book. Almost. And he manages to get himself a big kill, taking down Maya to kick things off. That would have been a heartbreaker if they got cameraman as well, because that would have been both hard breaches offline, and there's no uh, hard breach charges in the back pocket of the Monty or the Buck here. That would have been disaster for this round, but the fact they still got cameraman is okay. Like, you're still a maverick. you still got to get close to the wall, for example. That immediately puts you at risk. Here, at least, they should be able to open IT, which is such a critical part to attacking this top floor. Sorry, he's actually pushing in towards the connector spot. Normally, the IT side is really valuable because it helps you threaten in towards uh, catwalk. It's IT. You'd have a direct line in towards site. This really is very much more proximity to sites itself rather than being the site. So as long as he can get both of those sides opened up, it's going to be great for them. But he needs to not get picked off here. And this is what I was worried about. j getting a little bit cheeky. Still going to keep pushing the attack, but as the shots rain in, decides that enough is enough. Going to move himself back on into sight. Um, and Falcon's doing pretty well at the minute. Four versus five after that initial entry that they got there with the go. Nitro. So they're holding on pretty well. Lost not panicking, just going about their work, looking to get those reinforcements down. But when you're reliant on cameraman on the Maverick, look how much time it's taking. Half of the round is gone now, and they've only opened up one wall into connector. They've still got a mirror window that's looking into connector so they can't even go in there and establish themselves. And Lost mm. really not gaining any ground at the minute. And they've got to decide what they want to do with the Monty as well. Dots is very much by himself at the moment push out towards this jungle side. So you'd expect to at least see something coming into IT a bit later or a catwalk push to come through. They're not going to push accurate this because they have no intel on that side of the map. So it's looking very 
readable right now for Falcons. They look like they're in control. And again, it all comes off the back of a simple thing like a C4 off the rip on towards Maya that has completely ground any kind of progress in this round to a halt. Taking out the free play C4 there, Lobin at least reducing that danger. I think the problem, particularly for the Monty pushing in alone, is going into connector where there's a rotation from site out into connector. So if he tries to push forward into electrical, there's nothing he can do because he's going to have somebody coming at the back of him. He gets hit with a nitro for half health as well. And so this Monty is going to need a lot of support because they just cannot move out of connector without that support. They've managed to get the mirror window down, which will help. But the kill comes in onto dash, five versus three now. And it's all Looking a little bit bleak for loss. <laughs> Somehow the drop shot from the Monty. And we find ourselves rapidly in a 2v2. Falcons could let this slip potentially, but the plant is going to be difficult to find. He really needs support, and Loban's on the downstairs. It's not the place to be. Nope. I get it, but there's probably going to be questions for Loban there saying, mate, we needed you on site. Where were you, mate? This is it. Having the book underneath is a great idea for the post plant. Open the floor up, watch it from below. But it just wasn't sufficient to be able to cover the Monte. Yes, he can chuck the shield on his back. He has a little bit of protection. Lobin was watching the doorway, so they couldn't actually push through. But you can still find those shots. And that's exactly what they did and took him down. And yeah, I think having the Monte out there on their own, trying to push in to connector was always a risky one. It really slowed things down. Uh, you know, I think, if anything, Lost kind of made that look like a much better round for themselves than it actually was. You know, there really shouldn't have been an opportunity to put the diffuser down towards the end. Um, you know, Falcons were in control for the majority of that one. I think the big thing in that round was the idea was right. The book being downstairs, if you have someone coming in through IT, you have the Monty coming in from connector, it does all kind of come together, coalesce on the site itself, and that would have been fine. It just didn't work out that way, so they end up looking a little bit like they've got egg on their faces. Anyway, back downstairs we go into the basement. We didn't see Falcons remaining. have the best success down here in round one. It was very clean and clinical, coming out from loss. Five seconds back then, 3K in the round, did put a little bit of fear in their hearts, I imagine. Given he's got a 2K in the last one, he's definitely starting to look like the player to watch out for for the Brazilian side. I'm going to have those Capcom traps up on the upper floors. We often talk about Fresh's bingo cards. Um, I did. I was reading through it today. <laughs> There's a few new things on there. I did notice the Capcom kill is has made a return. A popular one has made a return. Um, so we'll keep an eye on that for him, um, whether Bursa manages to pick any up or not. Bursa does manage to pick one up. It's an opening kill onto Dash. It's another peak. It's not going to be the Capcom trap, mm. I'm afraid, Fresh. But Bursa, what a great start for his team there. And Loss, they've got to stop letting this happen, Des. Every one of the first three rounds, there has been an attempt, at least. Yes, Loss managed to get the kill in the first round. But after that, both of them have gone to Falcons. And... When you've got this position of having standings and these roster difficulties, that is exactly what Falcons want. They're playing five versus four at the minute, and that might just be the boost that they need to, you know, fight and do much better in this than maybe they should do. They really want to play chaos, essentially. That's why we spoke about them wanting to go to border a little bit later on in map two. But that to look forward to as an absolute guarantee. Whether or not we get to skyscraper will be anyone's guess. We've got to yet see how these first two maps go, but I do think border may well prove to just be a straight up shootout and even more chaotic than what we've seen so far here on Nighthaven Labs. Maya steps around and finds Valentino. So two separate 1v1s being won by the Fraggers on the side of Loss, with Lobin and Maya getting their one for the round. Yeah, I think that's always the problem when you're playing against a team like uh, loss where you've got somebody, you know, Maya who's very, very mechanically skilled. You can get yourself that advantage and then they're just going to walk in on you and pick up a kill here and there and just take gunfights because they carry in that sort of confidence. But it's four versus three in favour of loss at the minute. Falcons certainly not done in this round. They've still got a presence above, which is a big thing. And Loss are completely unaware of it. And Maya is going to be very fortunate to survive. But Leader is up there in support. Takes down cameraman Bursa. Well, they finishes off, well, Maya. Two, two versus two at this point. Quibs, as you say, down. Effectively, two versus one. It's all up to Great leader. Wave. Lobin is going to be the one to close him out. He's played it so well there, using your teammate as a little bit of bait and has collected himself for 3K in the round as well. Definitely more scrappy, much more gunfight laden than it was so much sight focus as we saw in previous rounds. But ultimately, it's the guns that go the way of loss. And this is the problem that we spoke about for... Falcons coming into this, you know, Meyer and Lobin have had arguably the tournaments of their lives back in Atlanta, yep. showing absolute top form. Prior to that, it was all Meyer. Now having a second player on side that's really stepping up to the to the line as well. It's going to be a challenge for Falcons to get much from this game. Admittedly, being down one and two on the defensive side doesn't feel great, given how we've already spoken about this being so defensive. Uh, defender side that doesn't matter at the moment. 
So we'll see if not, how, what they can do going into the second quarter. But as you can see on your screen, there's a very short tech pause coming in. Currently 2-1 to loss. So we'll get that corrected for at the bottom of the screen in a second. When we get things back underway, we'll find out how the second quarter goes. We will, just having a look at the beautiful fly through of our Night of Ring lads that, that we're playing now. Um, I, for me, it's as I said, it's a map that I enjoy watching in competitive. I enjoy playing mm. it as well. Um, Night Evans really, uh, I wouldn't even say really grown on me. I liked it uh, straight from the off, to be honest. I think it's um, it's got a good flow about it. There's you know plenty of vertical options, as you said. Uh, you know, there's areas that you've really got to consider, multiple floors. You've got to think about your defense. There's opportunities for attackers. You're never, um, you know, really going into something and there's only, you know, one way of doing it. Um, so it does just give you that, uh, that variety, that opportunity to create little surprises, little unexpected pushes for the defenders. Um, so, yeah. It's one that I really like, is not even. Me too. Me too, Tim. Products I enjoyed so much at the start when it came out, going around, around each region and just asking, so what call outs are you using on this map? And everyone <laughs> has different call outs for different parts of it. Like some of the call outs made zero sense. Some were just like, oh, actually, that is really quite smart. their own bespoke ways of looking at things and that was a really good way to sort of pick up the intricacies of the map when you start asking teams okay well, why is it called that how do you play around it so a very fun map at least by my measure here we go for round four then as things shape up loss on the attack as a reminder up two and one and bring along the jackal here and for me it's straight away seeing that coming alongside the decabia thought for a second we potentially also see the grim coming in here is it's all about Roma hunting. That's why you've also got the Nomad on side to lock down areas of the map they take. They're very aware of the kind of game that Falcons want to play here, which is getting up in their face, disrupting them, not letting Lost play to their game plan. And they're trying to control that here, trying to contain it by bringing along these operators. Storage is going to be the site of choice this time for round four. Um, you sort of get the feeling Loss are going to be happy with it. If they can get themselves a 4-2 uh, before they move on to the defence, I think that they'll be pretty satisfied with that because it's their map. They're going to be confident getting onto that other side when it's their setups uh, that Falcons have to play into. And I think that's where the difficulty is probably going to ramp up for Falcons. As you can see, the immediate push towards that top floor. The pocket EMP is going to be used by Dash trying to push on in. Leader's going to be down but not out. But Valentino does manage to pick up a kill onto Dots. Four versus four, though, as Leader is finished up. And Burst is here, just letting that LMG go burn towards the top of Catwalk. Cameraman in for a couple of kills himself, though, in for a three. Age is nothing. The man's marching his way through, has absolutely decimated the Falcons' bat line with a 3k. A 3v1, and Quibbs has got it all to do. And if anyone's going to do it, Tim, it's going to be this man, given his sat on six kills so far. Certainly has um, the pedigree so far in this map, but I think it's probably going to be a little bit too much to ask. Fuser is in the hands of Dash at the minute, and he is going to be in a position to start putting that down. So kills are going to have to be found very, very quickly because otherwise lost, they're just going to retire back now, try and hold their angles. They know exactly where the push is going to come from, from the final Falcons player. We've got the red ping coming out. We've got the info, but it's not enough as Dash manages to find that final kill, and that is going to open up a little bit of a Gap for loss here as they find themselves now 3-1. And probably unsurprisingly, Falcons take this time to call in a tack timeout, have a conversation because things are not going according to, dare I say, plan. There's definitely some degree of plan coming into the game. Absolutely zero doubt about that. But so far, it is not going the way that they intended for loss. I know a couple of rounds have looked a little bit off, but overall, they're the ones setting the pace of these rounds. They're the one making plays where cameraman can run through a defensive setup surrounded by you know, Maestro Evil Eyes and Azami Cuba Barriers and is still walking through and finding a 3K without any real response from the other side. And they've really got to get on top of that if they're going to find anything in the rest of this half. You can see Twister trying to work his magic there. Plenty of input coming from him. Um, we've watched this for a, sort of a, a few majors, really. Kept a, a focus on the different coaches. Obviously, um, you know, they have their own role to play. They can't talk during the gameplay. They can only talk to the team during the tactical timeouts like you've just seen there. Um, but it's, it's interesting because, of course, different coaches have different approaches. And, you know, some will be very vocal during those timeouts. Some will kind of leave it to the team IGL and maybe just chip in a little bit with what they've seen. And, um, yeah, it really varies team to team. But Twister's definitely one of those hands-on and coaches who he likes to, I think, try and give them something real that they can take away, change this, do that. You know, this is um, where you can have maybe more or less of an impact and try to really, uh, you know, give them something to think about. What I did like is even during that time when they're down three and one, he was still smiling, still having a laugh as well yeah, with a couple yeah. of the players. Like, you know, probably because they know for themselves the expectations coming into the tournament weren't super high for them. 
not just from amongst the community, but probably also from themselves as well. So anything is a game that they can walk away with here. And although it's only been one round so far, there's still plenty of siege to play. Still plenty of time to improve as the week goes by. Five seconds left. We're heading back up to the top floor then. It is the only one that has been won Attack so far by Falcon. It's back in round two. Um, actually pretty good from them. It started with a nitro out of electrical window that took Maya down. I don't think that Loss will be falling foul of that again. And indeed, they are not going to try it again, Falcons, because they know that that is likely not going to have any joy. Um, well, I'll be interested to see just how differently Loss approach this with the full strength team. They lost one of the hard breaches last time, and it took them an age to get the walls open that they would like to. They were left with a Monty sort of trying to push into connector on his own. And just there was nothing really connecting the team together after a couple of losses um, of personnel. So this time around, definitely need to stick together a little bit more, take some maps control, get themselves a bit of a beachhead that they can work from and have a more sort of organised execution inside of sight rather than just trying to chuck the diffuser down because they're in the last 10 seconds. We're going hard on that denial focus with the Kai and the Bandit, mind you. So cameraman should be getting to work once again. No C4s this time around to get things off and underway. Could be Myers able to have an impact elsewhere around the map, but they will be looking towards those impact EMPs in the back pocket of Dr. 2 start getting some of these walls opened up. One at least can be dealt with by the Maverick, as we know. Even with it being electrified, it can still blow torches way through. But it's going to be the Habana who needs a little bit of assistance from the team to do what she needs to do. Cameraman working on that connector wall once again. Given that it was uh, electrified, it meant that Maya could not do the job for him. So Lordy will now come in, open up the soft wall, and that is access to connect again. So it's just going to prevent uh, the defenders of Falkers being able to rotate through there, get too aggressive. Uh, there is uh, no mirror on side this time, so it's very possible that that connector wall from sight uh, may well be fully reinforced as well. Nitro goes out. It's going to kind of do its job. Cameraman does get down. I'm surprised he didn't kind of try to move out of the way a little bit more. I know I'm probably being a bit sort of hypercritical there, but, um, you know, he will have seen it appear on the wall above him, and he just seems to stand still for that one. Just being down here as well. Knox comes marching his way up through Warehouse. That's the right sort of idea. Leader's going to get one back on towards Maya, though not having a lot of success on the Habana, admittedly. Second round attacking in towards this site where Maya's just been taken out early on. One from a C4, one here as the first player to die in the entire round overall. Valentino dangerously low. Still walks away alive for now. Dots is just going to keep holding that tight angle. He managed to take down the f at the top of the garage catwalk, so it means um, he's free now to sort of peek that at will. Going to send in some of the bees just to prevent himself getting peeked as he heads out of the window, and he's looking to get himself across to the top of the aqua stairs there. May well face some uh, resistance as he tries to go in, but he does have support from the IQ. Dash does manage to get Bursa, but it is a trade as he picks up Lobin. Four versus two now as leader finishes off Dash, and Falcon's looking good on the top floor once again, but Dots somehow wins out a gunfight with leader. Valentino's there for a double, and Falcons, they manage to pick up another. A little bit close, a little bit scrappy at the end. I think it was Dots who... Walked in straight onto a Legion Gumar and just instantly put himself down there. So any kind of chaos that could have come at the round end, it all had to come from cameraman. And with three players to find, would have been a bit of a tall order. You hold on here. And again, for loss, I think, although you'll look at this and say, oh, you're giving two rounds away to Falcons on your map pick. How could you? Not forgetting that at the moment, you know, the meta we keep on speaking about, it's quite defender favoured. And loss has still got three attacking rounds here on at this first half. But once they get onto the defensive side, that's where Falcons will be really put to the test. From Valentino, though, great spot. It was, you know, just lead prone, just, you know, create that sort of element of surprise a little bit. You don't always expect it coming through. Um, and it was always going to be a, a tough finish there anyway for loss. So Falcons will take us into their final defensive round. Honestly, if they can come away with a 3-3 on the defense of Night Haven, I think they'll kind of feel okay about that. You know, they'll be in a position where they feel like maybe they can get something going on attack. I do feel like the attacking half is going to be more difficult for them once loss gets on the defense. Um, I would expect loss to be able to lock down top and bottom floor at least given that this is a good map for them um, so that kind of secures them four rounds if you look at it like that so 3-3 three, three might not be enough for Falcons but it's the best that they can do at this point and that's what they need to try and make sure that they grab a hold of here comes a little bit of chaos as well with that blitz on side like I've really seen the evolution of the use of the blitz where a lot of teams would use it really to be full on like you know cheese let's all rush in five stack force our way through a doorway thinking about Oregon when I say things like that Whereas today already, we've probably seen it picked four, five, six times. And much more used quite cautiously and used to like backstab up main stairs on Clubhouse, for example. 
The teams are still trying to find new ways of making use of it where it is much slower and more calculated. Whether or not Loss have uh, got the memo on that one or if it is just a full send in towards site is a different conversation. And we'll tell. I see Valentino working on the top floor in and around meeting, but we also saw that pre-placed Nitro. I think it was inside of storage, so that's going to leave it bang underneath IT, and it's up there to try and support Valentino. If he makes the call that somebody's pushed into IT, is challenging him there, then that one can be triggered, and it will go off and take out anybody in there. At the minute, Lost don't look like they're going to be pushing into IT, um, so it's not too much of a threat for them, but it's just something to... Keep an eye on should they rotate, which Maya is currently doing. No, he's going to drop down underneath, so that answers that question. Probably just go and get everything opened up on the downstairs yeah, while the I rest think. of the team plays catch up, I imagine. And then he's their only hard breach. That said, all the hard breach is gone. Only got two of the uh, ex Cairo's pellets still left in back bomb. pockets and get a slither opened up, but very little more. This might have to be quite an aggressive push in towards the east of the downstairs, and already Burst is there with a the C4 in hand to greet them, probably reading into the fact there is only the one hard breacher and Reading into where Loss are most likely to push from. Maya getting one back. Ribs is there for the instant trade. It's back and forth across those first three players. Yeah, Falcons are doing great to keep themselves in this. Um, Loss at the minute struggling, to be honest. Lobin is going to get taken down as well. Going to find himself now down, but not out. Not likely to be picked up, I wouldn't have thought. Cameraman does manage to find one. We've seen him go big once already. His team are going to need him to do it again, realistically. Two versus three. They do have a lot of time on the board, but make that effectively one versus three now. Dash has got an awful lot of work cut out. No, he's managed to pick Lobin up. That surprises me, actually, given that he was so close to site. But... Going to now try to start pushing on in. They've got to force the kills out of this one as well. But Quibs, I've already mentioned him a couple of times today, has gone huge. Lobin's got to find two more with a slither of HP to his name. Up towards the left side, his leader. The skeleton key not quite fired in time to secure a kill for Lobin. 3-3 three, three split. Not terrible for either side, I'll wager, Tim. No, I don't think so. Uh, like we say, it's good. there's going to be a different um, different energy, a different feel coming into this second half. Mm -hmm. I kind of look at it both ways for Falcons. I think, you know, yes, your defense is always going to be difficult um, if you've got a pickup player because you've kind of got to fit them into, you know, you've got to change things around, you've got to fit them in, you don't necessarily have the setup that you might want. Um, on attack, it kind of removes a little bit of that. You know, we could look at it and say, yes, they're playing into loss now who are going to have very solid setups, well prepared. Um, you know, you'd expect them to do well. But on the flip side, you've got a situation now where Falcons can kind of just play a little bit freer. They're not having to play within a system specifically. Um, you know, they can just react to what's in in front of them they can a little wander in see if they can get a gunfight or two at the minute you know there's a couple of players that are really starting to get going quibs on nine we've got valentino on five as well bursa leader both getting involved so they've got players there who are winning gunfights and it might actually suit them to just have a little bit more freedom to say right just what if we got in front of us this is where we're going to push from if they get to any point where serious coordination is needed that's where they might find themselves struggling a little bit Outside of Lobin on the Solus here as well, I'm looking at the lineup for the side of Loss, and it just screams like total shutdown, fortress style setup. And you've got the mirror, the Azami, Jammer's block away in the information game. Obviously, joined it by the Solus as well, and the Femrith when they do come pushing in. So, if nothing else, it shows respect from Loss by saying, Yeah, we could get out in the map and try and gunfight you and be aggressive in the early round, but is there really a need to? Like, we think you guys will struggle to execute, so let's just sit in behind the utility we've got. Sure, we'll dance around, pick up a few drones. Definitely expecting Lobin to be the one who's maybe out there trying to challenge early on. But the rest of the team probably can do a great job just sitting back and letting Falcons just fall against the spear. Yeah, I think that's definitely going to be uh, a little bit of the thought process. We even get Lobin heading back in towards site there. Um, yeah, you know, like you say, a team that's maybe not uh, not as prepared as everybody else, you look at it and you think, let's just let them burn a lot of time. We don't need to throw bodies at this. We don't need to lose man count. Um, you know, it's going to take them time to figure out what we've done. It's going to take them time to coordinate and get breaches. It's going to take them time to move in and get into any sort of position to start really pressuring us. Um, so by doing that, You've nearly wasted half of the round already before you've got breaches coming in. Uh, so, yeah, I think Lost probably quite happy to just sit back and see how it goes. If it doesn't work out for them, there's going to be future rounds where they can maybe get out on the roam and make things more tricky. Um, but for the time being, they don't need to throw too much at this. They don't need to overwork it. Well, be careful if they step inside of IT because they have got that little map hole open at the bottom. They can see from the stairs feet of any player who steps in. So as long as Lobin doesn't go past the workbench inside of IT, they'll be absolutely fine. Maya, again, having a real tough first game. It gets picked up by J-Lad. Five versus four for Falcons, and suddenly that attack starts to look 
a little bit more promising. Lobin gets one back onto Valentino, 4v4. This is it. Falcons need to make sure they're not no, losing no. bodies because going in two versus four, for example, is just going to be extremely difficult. Managing to keep that wall close, just burning through the utility here. Loss down into the final minute. They're not looking too bad now that they've leveled things up. They do have a dash on low health, but other than that, they're pretty solid at this point. Looking cozy. There's no more ex-Kairos left either as well to deal with anything else on the other side. Any mirror windows that are still left up, for example, probably not going to get taken out at this point. One more falls. Really, it feels Max person is studied for probably 20, 30 seconds now and not really made anything happen. I think he's waiting for the rest of the team to get into the right position, but it's just giving time for the side of Lost to dance around and take gunfights where they want to. It's down to a three versus one, leading with it all to do. With 30 seconds on the clock, Tim, tall order. We know he's a player that's got the ability, um, oh. but as you say, it's just going to be a lot of work from here on in. We've got multiple levels to this defense. You know, they're downstairs, they're on site, they've got crossfires. So he's just going to be pushing his way into, you know, a very well established um, few positions here. So it's going to be very difficult. Tries to move in from Catwalk, but it's going to be Dots that picks him up. And that's going to be a first successful defense for Loss. And this is what I said coming in at the 3 3. The difficulty is I expect Loss on the defense to win top floor and to win bottom floor, which is probably the site that we're going to be seeing up next. If they do those two, that's all they need to do. They win 7 5. They can lose the tertiary site both times. It doesn't matter. They get it done. They move on to map two. So I think, you know, Loss are going to be happy to be that. Falcons are really going to need to disrupt them somehow. It's hard because attacking is always more difficult than defending. It is. I think for Falcons there, they've tried to you know, push in from two or three angles. They've got IT being opened up. They're trying to push in towards Catwalk. They also have Valentino, I believe it was, trying to work his way in through Electric. But the problem is Lobin was sat there. He picked up a 2K and just completely killed any kind of east side push that might come through to support the IT push coming in. And you saw what happened. Bursa and Leader both got really stuck in the same spot on Catwalk because they didn't have enough to bring to the attack to unsettle loss or make them feel uncomfortable there. So not really bothered. I think Falcons have got to move a little bit quicker, though, if they want to try and catch loss off guard. Heading down to the bottom floor, as suggested then. Um, and again, you know, touching on what you've just said there, there's, you know, having to move a little bit quicker to catch them off guard. It's a tough site to do that on. There's a lot of work that needs to be done. You need to make sure that you've got, um, you know, potentially the top two floors clear. Certainly, uh, the mid floor has to be cleared out. You've got to be thinking about how you're breaching that uh, that double wall. You've got to be thinking about how you're getting into site. You don't want to be losing the entry. It's going to be mm. very difficult now, especially with Quibs gone, for them to be able to push in quickly, for them to be able to work that fast. It's the Maverick that's gone as well. So I'm looking across the utility. I'm thinking, how are you opening that wall? Um, you know, you've got your thermite in there, but if there's a mute jammer on it, you're already starting to struggle. I think when I saw it, it was soft, actually. But all the ones on the external facing walls are currently soft, so not even really a need for no, the thermite you, to come yeah, charging on. Does it correct. reinforce? Soft. It looks soft. Yeah, it's soft. Yeah. I thought I saw that hole in it, so they could just walk up and pop it through, but this is why I don't think Lost really cares, because they've got the mirror facing from Nano straight down onto it, and they'll have some kind of vertical presence, I imagine, or the ability to rotate players over to play vertically. That's why you've got cameraman in the room next door to storage. You can move over with that shotgun, get a couple of holes opened up and suddenly start challenging onto that double external facing wall. They don't really look bothered right now. It's like Falcons are the ones who've got to figure something out. Yeah, exactly that. And also certainly they did it in the, the last round, you know, sat on site. Um, we're just going to allow you to play. You're the ones who have to play around us. You're the ones who've got to make something happen. Um, now getting themselves out into mid floor as well, Loss, given that they've got a man advantage, they've got that uh, luxury that they're able to push forward. I'm just wondering, um, I think Leader's got the shotgun in hand um, as the secondary, so we'll be able to open up that soft wall. But for the time being, it looks like Falcon's pressure is going to come more towards Animus and trying to push in through that single wall. But with the barricade up there, it's going to make it fairly easy to hold off. Well, smoke's coming through. Any C4s to play behind? Both already used or deployed somewhere. So a couple of things they can play behind, but even with the smoke, it should be enough time for the rest of the team to double back around and make this a very, very comfortable round event. End of the round for the side of Lost. Find a second. It's into a five versus two as Meyer finds a third. Comfortable defensive round. Yeah, absolutely. Valentino's got Diffuser in hand, so I guess that's a point to the credit. But moving over to that double wall, does manage to find one, but his teammate Versa is going to be taken out on the top floor. And that's going to leave Valentino all alone, pushing in through that single wall. Got the marksman rifle, isn't able to find anybody yet. And look at the pressure mounting, that shark circle in there. It's going to be Lobin who manages to find that final kill. And that is now 5-3 in favour of Loss. And you just feel like this one is, as expected, starting to run away from the Falcons a little bit. 
been a little bit rough. I think the attacks, it feels like they lack any kind of real decisiveness. Like they, dare I say, it's like, <laughs> it sounds really bad. It's like when you're playing in ranks and you're trying to coordinate people around a certain push or whatever. And people are kind of like not 100% sure on what it is they should be doing in the moment itself. There's not like a coordinated goal or objective or a part of the map to fight over. And I'm sure Fresh somewhere is laughing thinking, hey, that's what Split Theory is for. Whole conversation about that another time. But it does mean that when Lost are having to defend something down, they can chuck a smoke there. A couple of players can rotate in, set up crossfires. We saw two players on the vertical there as well for Valentino. They just don't look bothered because Falcons aren't moving at any kind of pace or with any real clear objective outside of, well, I guess we've got a plant at some point, so let's push that way. It needs another layer of depth is the way I'm looking at it. Kitchen is going to be the third choice site for Los. Then we saw Storage as the third choice site for Falcons, uh, but Los are mixing it up. They're going to try and keep hold of Meeting. Uh, that's going to be your primary vertical angle is Meeting and the corridor outside of it. That's going to enable you to clear off the back of the anybody playing around the back of the breach, for example, some of those half wall boost spots that you see with the desks. Um, just going to help you to sort of control that area if you can get in vertically and open things up. Kitchen itself is pretty safe from the vertical. The hatch has been reinforced. It is a little bit of a run out, but it's a risk and reward. You can get it done if you're quick, and they have been able to. That means that Kitchen can be played pretty safely from the verticals, but of course, you've got to think about the window that goes directly into Kitchen. Do. That's always the one where Flair teams run towards. It's where things like the Ying would really come into great effect. There, as we've seen teams use it brilliantly before. Of course, not available here. It's been banned away, so there's still other things to consider and work your way through. Imagine for Falcons, we'll see him go for an approach you'd expect most teams to, which is really to clear from the top down, work your way through the entire map, make sure there's no one lurking on the top floor, which I guarantee you there will be. It is loss after all. So it's like, hey, before you can even start thinking about the site, you've got to be really cohesive as a team here. I mentioned that lack of decisiveness in the previous rounds. You've really got to see some team play coming in here to get control of these areas of the map. But right now, loss still hold on to. I holding a horrible little angle onto the door there, just prepared for any upside down repel. And um, for the time being, Falcons just getting themselves positioned. We haven't seen any major challenges yet. And um, they're just looking to get poised, get ready before they start pushing forward. But they haven't dealt with the top floor yet. And that's going to be potentially a little bit dangerous for them. Lobin is looking to just help his man hold on. Will be able to. Knows that pressure's mounting from multiple sides. But whilst he and Maya can work together like this, it's going to be very difficult for Falcons to move on in. And I like the hold on meeting. But that is an important kill from Falcons. Taking down Maya, it now isolates Lobin. They can push him in numbers from multiple sides and potentially get this control that they need. Now Lobin's that next line of defense that they could fall back onto here. With j -Lad on the backstab as well as worked his way through. And now this is what I was speaking about. He's giving problems for Lost to try and work their way through. So now while the push is coming on the top side, there's someone else hitting them on bending. And suddenly the comms start well, getting a bit crazy. Players aren't quite sure 100% where to look. Should they pull back? Should they not? Just to settle momentarily. But Falcons are the ones who came out with the higher body count. 3v2. They haven't dealt with Lobin yet, though, and that could be a big problem with him on the top floor. It does leave Dash a little bit isolated, but the diffuser is not in the hands. Lobin is holding on to it at the minute, and whilst he continues getting okay. kills, there is nothing Falcons can do here. Lobin is the linchpin of this defence. Diffuser at his feet, 30 seconds left to survive. He just needs to hold on in that position, and Dash, he's gone upstairs to support him. Smart move from Los. They are going to lock this one out if they continue. Yeah, that's got to get something off the back of this one as well, but I can't imagine that Lobin, the final raid boss, will be too easy to walk your way through. One goes the other way, but it's immediate trade. Dash on the backside gets the close in two. And really, look at where the end of that round came through. It was a round meeting. It was a round connector. Let's remember, the site was downstairs in Kitchen, yet really, Falcons could barely step more than 15 meters into the building without losing every single player. Yeah, I like, uh, I like the setup that Lobin and Maya had. It worked really well for them. They worked in tandem really well. But then Lobin, smart decision. As soon as he sees that that diffuser's down inside the window, he's like, you know what? Get me some Kiba barricades because I'm locking this one down. And he just held on to himself at the window. If he loses that gunfight on the window, that was a real critical one. I think it was two versus three. If he loses that fight, they can recover the diffuser, dashes in a 1v3. All of a sudden, you've got a big problem. But no, Lobin wins it when he needs to. Great defense there from Loss, showing how to hold on to Kitchen, showing why meeting is so important, and the fact that teams will fight to the absolute death. They will lose the round trying to get hold of meeting before they will just go direct to site a lot of the time. So, well played, Loss, and they send themselves now to match point. Map point. 
rather. Yeah. Getting ahead of Not myself. quite match point yet. Still got border to come next at the bare minimum. And maybe Skyscraper yeah, if it requires that third map. But I think so far we've seen what we expected. Lost being, I wouldn't say 100% in control. Falcons have got three rounds on the board after all. But overwhelmingly, Lost do look like the team that have got more structure. Have got more, you know, more about them is really the only way that I can put it. And they have been a level above Falcons so far. Of course, it could change coming into border. Though I'm not expecting it. Falcons to begin with, I think, you know, if they want to improve upon those previous attacks, um, it is about getting some map control, realistically. Uh, they've already attacked onto this site already, onto server. Um, they need to get themselves established either in connector or IT, maybe get themselves, you know, top warehouse control and try to push forward from there. Just get themselves into a position to think about getting the diffuser down. But Lost, they're likely going to play this very similar to how they did last time and just, you know, hold their positions. They're going to be confident in the setup now. Uh, just let it play out and try and burn as much time as they can. That's the spot where Lobin held previously. It was here where Lobin, I think, killed Valentino and one of the player and really broke down what would have been an otherwise, you know, Standard top floor attack coming out of Falcons. You give it here, he's playing more inside of sides himself. As you can see Duggan watching in towards Catwalk. Already, Spokes come out. Dash out with the vector finds Quib. Dash onto his backside. A four versus four. Only 60 seconds into the round, Tim. Yeah, it's getting pretty furious here as Falcons try to sort of strong arm their way in, really. Um, but it hasn't worked for them yet. Not really established. And you can see them just hopping over balconies there. They're going to be having to rotate. I think the call has been made to try and get themselves onto the Aqua Stairs side, try and get themselves um, in and around connector and just support the push coming from that side rather um, than trying to work from multiple angles. It's burnt a bit of time for loss. So they're going to be happy with that. And they just need to recognize it now. They just need to make that call that, you know, this rotation is coming and the push is going to come from elsewhere. Cameraman, I'm not sure they're aware of his position here. If JWAD keeps pushing in, uh, he's looking the wrong way. It's going to be a good night for him as Cameraman does indeed find him. Another one is down in the shape of Bursa and it's looking like it could be all over for the Vulcans. One of these coming back to bring it to a two versus three, at least temporarily. Could grow up to be a three versus three if they can get Bursa back up. But given how far away the players are, that feels unlikely. Lead is on the deck as well. Only one left standing. It is Valentino, and at this point, they want to go hunting for their kills. Cameraman not going to be able to find his man, and Valentino getting out of there has got to win a one versus two to make this work. He's down to half HP. A couple of bullets should be enough. He's against the mirror window. They know exactly where he is, Tim. Manages to get himself one. Could be on for a 4K to keep the game going. So it's now essentially a 1v1 with Bursa down. Valentino pushing in the flash. He's not going to find its target. The last man is inside of IT. I don't think he knows. The problem he's got is he's going up now against a shotgun. He sees the barrel. He tries to extend the distance. He manages. There's oh! the challenge. And there is the clutch from Valentino. And Twister, he's letting Lost know about it. Down to 5 HP and pulls off the 4K. Massive. Again, these are the kind of things where it feels like Lost sort of slip. And you know, I can't put it all on uh, Lost there and say, oh, Valentino just played and Lost let him win. It absolutely wasn't the case. But so much of that, when you look at it, Lost with three players still up should not be letting a bunch of 1v1s be what determines the outcome of that round. But that's exactly what they gave Valentino. And he plays it to perfection. And even Maya doesn't look too chuffed at how that one ended out. No, I think a little bit of uh, frustration probably on the side of Lost there. They know that that one should have been done and dusted. They should have been heading to border already, but they're going to have at least one more round here, and Falcons are making a good run of this. 4-6. Tell you what, they win this downstairs attack. They've not looked great on it previously. It's going to be a big ask for them, but if they can get that done, all of a sudden you start looking at it and saying they've stretched them to 12 on their own map. What's going to happen on border? That's what I start to worry about as well, Tim. Again, it's not so much uh, a sloppiness thing, but I think this is why many look at loss even after the Atlantic, making it to the grand final of the Atlanta Major and look back at Five previous tournaments, at stage results, and just say, the problem is consistency is not a thing. So even okay. though they hold that accolade of being a potential major winner just a few months ago, maybe it hasn't always got the kind of like, it's a bit loose around the edges in places. It's not quite as tight and drilled as they need it to be. And letting rounds like that slip, sounds silly to say on literally their first map and first game of the whole competition. Those are the things that will make a difference down the line. 100%. And has, yeah, looking further down the line, it's, you know, the other teams that they're going to have to play. Um, you know, I think loss would have probably been punished more. Um, but uh, as it is, Falcons still in a position to punish them. 
as they continue to work through the soft wall will be taken advantage of this time um, it is going to be Quibs that goes in with the book and opens things up quite quickly last time they were having to I think use the gridlock use the sort of DMRs to try and open holes up um, but this time they can get on it quick smart J-Lad manages to pick up Lobin as well and all of a sudden you wonder whether Loss are just having a little bit of a wobble inside of the comms there maybe the mentals going yeah, Des they've got Falcons chasing them down they've lost the entry kill and and this could be another round heading in the direction of Balkans. A lot of work to be done yet, but it's a great start nonetheless. Would you say they're starting to feel a little bit lost, Tim? Would, I mean, you could if you wanted to say that, Des. I think I will say that, Tim. Terrible joke, but I'll roll with it anyway. But Meyer, I think really, I don't want to highlight him as kind of yeah, the reason why they're losing, not at all. But when he's been a standout player for them so consistently over the last year or so, for him to be 4-9 in the first game against the team again that's playing with subs is not the best look for him. And sure, Logan's been picking up the slack and Dash is making something happen as well with a jump out coming in. He's the one to fall down here, but immediately traded out. Valentina was there ready. It's tip for tap, back and forth between the two teams. Three versus three. I kind of feel like that's what Loss needed. It's like one of them rounds where you just say, what are we doing here? Just let's get these beat. Let's get it done. And, you know, Dash has taken that mentality out of the window. Get the kill right. Let's fire us up. We've had a trade. We're now three versus three versus Low. Final hope of any hard breach if they need any. Uh, you know, they may have the access that they need now, but they can't hold these angles forever, can't Falcons. The push is going to have to come. Loss are not going to peak them now. They're not going to over-aggress. Cameraman's likely in their ear saying, look, we just need to play time here and wait for the challenges to come. We've got our angles. We've got our cover. They're the ones who need to win this. Um, and Loss, you know, likely take the map if they can just keep themselves um, from peaking out too aggressively. And that's really the way that I thought they'd approach this entire second half. Just let them run at you and be the ones to make the mistakes. And sure enough, two kills come flying on in. Versa coming up against his main team. Loss Academy he plays for. It's Loss that he's standing up against here. All three players on full HP. Bursa on about 10. Should be a comfortable closeout for him. He's down at just one HP. Maya and cameraman standing between him along with 10 seconds on their side. This one's going to be a closeout, Tim. Yeah, I think almost certainly they're just uh, playing it smart here. Here's the movement through the soft wall. Takes a spray. Can't find his man. Cameraman it is to mop it up. And that is going to be... All that she wrote for Nighthaven Labs, at least, as Falcons get taken down by loss, and that is 1-0 in this best of three. I want to say it was comfortable. It didn't feel it the whole way through. As a whole, no. yes, to a degree, but I think looking at how you know, Valentino and Quibs have played there, both have dropped double digits when it comes to kills. It's far from going to be an easy ride on border, I think, and I wouldn't be surprised, actually, if things get really explosive there and things start to feel even more messy as the series goes on. Yeah, I think Team Falcons are going to come away from that and they're going to look at it and think, you know, yeah, it's not something we expected to win. We've played all right. I think they take a lot from that, to be honest. Absolutely. Still more to come. I'm sure Twist will be able to kind of say, right, guys, I know it's our first official play and it's this group of five players. Yeah, let's reflect. Let's go and work on this one now. And they could come back into it. A very different team on board, as we've said. I'd love to see it go all the way to Sky. Still kind of have that anticipation of the 2-0, but it's invite. You just never know, do you? We'll go to a quick break. When we come back, map two will be ready, so don't go anywhere. See you in a few. We can pull this back. We can sort of get the drive down. There's always that balance of whether it's the coach that sort of says, I know what my team can do. I know when these players need to have someone talk to them just based on how they're moving, how they're playing, or there's something obvious, or no, they'll work this out. It's a confidence and it's an experience, Volps. He steps into the goo mine and gives a little bit of the intel of the approach away, but they're more than happy to sort of still bait that. It's a bit of utility. You just you just traded a little bit of health for the utility. It's fine. It's not just that, but also the prox alarm that just went off. So it's like all the alarm bells just went off. Like, ah, oh, there's someone here. Not again, not again, not again, not again. He instantly fell back. He's like, I'm not going to try and take this one. Look at this, though. Obviously, the last time we were here, we lost two bodies on the top floor in the set in the sort of middle area of the map. Here, Virtus Pro entirely pulled themselves down towards the side. All five players, flat as they can be, across with Joystick having the most adventure, slightly up his deck. Now they did put up a lot of barricades just to slow down the, the side of Liquid slightly and also of course gain a small bit of information like hey they right now have entered this room and they've entered the bar area, stuff like that. And as they get going, the drones uh, having a lot of extra time right now to actually do work on the site. The track stingers being caught off by the magnets. The Volps now looking around with that Bravo. It's going to be hacking one of the magnets just to make sure that utility can fly through in the future. 
they're sort of waiting currently. The hatches, they're not quite being battened down, more blown up. The catch onto the utility that's otherwise across it. And Pasha playing the Tuberau, the first time we've been able to see the operator. If you're new to knowing what they do, well, they're a little bit chilly. They throw a canister that freezes things in their tracks and gives you some of the tracks on the approach. But with the proxies and the bullets that quickly follow, they don't really need the slowdown right now, more than sort of saying, come on, speed it up. 40 seconds and the spray against the chair as reset stacks all the way in. They've got control of blue and there's the freeze. So as soon as they try and swing this, suddenly they'll be a bit slowed. Lagonis, he's tucked on the close plant. Hera Sifa would ruin his day, but with the attention being put in from the far end, it's Shepard on the swing. Gets the plant at 20 seconds. Now he's holding himself behind the table. He's waiting to see if a new face tries to show up and get the kit. It's Parley when resets with one apiece, but they haven't got the man that stopped it before. They're double stacked. Second again, joystick. Gets another round for Virtus Pro and make sure that they keep their advantage into the second half. Well, not even double stacked, triple stacked at some point, but one of them got taken out. It's like, and it's well, Shepard there in the first moment, they realized as they went through, but before that, let's just uh, quickly go for a mid half call in. We got a mid half call in with <laughs> Jesse on the line. Hello, Jesse J. Chick. Hello, Emmy. Hello, Hap. Listen, I've come in to uh, perhaps warn the people because although I did come into this series predicting Virtus Pro to come out on top, and although they had a great first half, 4 2 split, not bad at all, this is a map that we've seen VP struggle to attack a lot in the past. Throughout stage two, Clubhouse was Virtus Pro's most played map. Despite that fact, they struggled on attack. 41% overall win rate attacking this map through stage attack two. And Liquid, for their point of view, have never lost a defense through stage two on this map. Now, that's because they didn't play this map. So, big caveat on that. <laughs> However, that still does lead into things. They've clearly been hiding some stuff. VP may not know what to expect, which may make their attacks even more questionable. So, although I do think VP win this series, I'm, I'm a little bit worried that they only got four rounds in that first half. Well, thank you very much, Big Brain Canadian. And away he goes. I don't know where to. I don't know either. They keep analysts and casters very separate. Yeah, just put them back in the jar. Put them in, <laughs> in the <laughs> jar? He's small enough. Okay. <laughs> Doesn't need like an entire... Jesse looks like he could be tall, and they started putting him next to Lax, and you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, never mind. <laughs> Ram going through is going to be opening up quite a little bit of the kitchen. <laughs> he came in and said really good, interesting points. And he was like, yeah, Jesse's small, lol. <laughs> well, I mean, he said, they've never lost a defense at stage two. Why did he sound play. like that to you? Is no, that what it sounds just, like no, to you? No, 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 just not what it sounds like. Okay. Yeah, he does. It was a great impression. Thank you. That's what he sounds like to me. Sure, thank you. A minute-ish has gone-ish, but so is all the Liquid players. They have fallen their way back towards the site. We saw it as the final hold there of VP, where they sort of held everything close to their chest. You can play it. It's how it was traditionally played way back when, before we sort of had the extension, the roam, the play around the space, because there's a lot of space down here. There's a lot that needs to be taken control of. There's a lot of hatches. And the bait onto where to do it has slowed Virtus Pro down quite a lot. As I said, pace might have been an issue before, but VP are a slow and steady team. They are using the ramps to try and speed up some of the clear on it. They're going for the break here on towards the opposite end. Volps isn't quite going to get the impact of the angle on the first, but we'll go for the second and maybe the third set. Yeah, I mean, the second set soon to be deployed. And that is, of course, the, when you really want to make sure it's not going to be opening up. But another Bugie is starting to come through. It's a lot of sound that is uh, being emitted right there by the device, but also opening up all those angles, making it really unplayable for the players down below. But you don't know when you are going to be uh, well, swung at from those angles that are opened up. Exothermic to be used on one of the hatches as well, just to make sure that the uh, well variety of options is going to be there for Virtus Pro, but also the amount of pressure points that they could use Utilize when the final execute finally will hit. And if you look at how they set up, well, a lot of hatches have been opened up, so it seems like it might be a normal armory plant. I mean, they love to do the play that they're sort of building towards. They love to do that structured hold here, and that's the take and the setup. There is a lot, including the mute jammers behind that church wall. You've still got Lagonas pretty comfortable and confident with that wall solid onto dirt. So it it's going to be a little bit of an awkward push in because, well, they don't have control of any of the swings. Pasha has to try and force some of this church wall to make it a bit safe to drop down onto the back end. 20 seconds left. Joystick finds the first. They've finally gone for the break onto the church wall here. They're going to swing into the fight in a second. The flashes come around the corner, but with time ticking, they swing into their own flash. Drop down onto blue. The double down swing from resets. 
gets the destruction inside Moto. Tucked around, can't find the fight. They're a little bit lost. Is Liquid just step into the space they claim? Dan's a little bit too late to the party because there might be four players, but there's that many seconds and they just run out of time. And you just look at that, it, it, it just, everything kind of falls apart. The moment that first flash hits, Reset's allowed to go for a double peak, take down Bo, get into Motorcycle as well, whilst the third player is starting to come through. And it's, it's just unfortunate there for the side of Virtus Pro how that round eventually played out because it seemed like they were starting to get into the right path and then it all just broke down. All right, good start here from Liquid, but what changes can come through from the side of Virtus Pro? Because time is a cruel mistress, but no crueler than on this side. When you've sort of baited them into the full clear, the others are much more direct routes through, and they're able to win a couple of their engagements, but when only one engagement going away from you sets the sort of style you're down for, and you don't have the time to reconstruct, I, I mean, it turns into that nightmare situation. And it, it fell at that point that the opening from the triple wall actually hurted them because they lose one to reset. Then you see the Habana turn around. It's like, oh, wait, there's an opening there. I need to be watching as well before someone pops out. Get shot in the back. And it's like the, you just lost the entire flank out there because you were both taken down due to a faulty flashbang. And again, it is unfortunate the way that that round played out in the end for Virtus Pro because it felt like they were building him quite nicely. It started like they were getting some good control and then it crumbled. We talked a little bit about passion of the players earlier on and I did it for one of the teams, but let's be real, it goes without saying it's Liquid here. Liquid on their home soil. Liquid with a Nesk and a Palu who have been fighting and biting for this chance for the Dawn of Siege. Being able to claim that sort of trophy position, being able to claim that lead in position from the side of things in front of a home crowd, you cannot imagine a team that is as fueled up. And yeah, you know, there's sort of a lot of strong teams, especially from the Brazil region. There's a lot of huge potential. I mean, there's the current two time major reigning champions that are in contention. But I think if you will see anyone that is fighting to the end of this possibility, you are looking at team local players. And people, even on socials, they keep saying, like, when? When are they finally going to win it? They keep getting so close every now and then. Fulps open it up. It's going to be a great start of this CCTV round for uh, for Liquid. I mean, they are here at this major because of the run at one of that at one of the run majors, even. They're here at SI. Oops, Pasha. Slips happen. Workplace accidents happen. Oh. Oh. Well, it's definitely a way to finish it off. Yeah, <laughs> the, there's a great take from Volps, who has been tearing through some of these rounds. He seems to have these big triple kill, quad kill rounds and gets that pace going for the roster and the team here. A two versus five. And they've sort of fallen to bits on this approach onto what is supposed to be the most sort of standard and known attack. And it does seem to uh, be the... Fault, like the faulting kind of attack in the to come through, just everything going away. I mean, just look at the breach as well. It's just not completely Ooh. done right. Shepard will find Vops though, as he did decide to jump through the wall again or through the little gap to get back towards the site. So definitely an opportunity for VP to bring it back slightly. They need to work together though. They need to be that two men pushing up, making sure that they work towards that same goal. And as they are on the rafters, they might actually have the opportunity to locate one, maybe even isolate two of these players into straight up one-on-one -on -one fights. But they do need to win them if they want to have the opportunity. And the big danger is still in the player that's in construction, but Palo being below as well, having the opportunity to just deny that plant with the C4. And with 10 seconds left on the clock, Shepard taking damage, wanting to go for a plant. He doesn't know what to do next. And as now his cover down below falls, it is Liquid that equalized the score. For a piece, and they are a team with the fire. So, as I was sort of highlighting towards the middle of that round, of all the teams here at SI, only five of them have been at just one of the two majors we've had this year. And two of them have been from Brazil, and one of them is Liquid. Oops. Yeah, there's a frustration. That's, I mean, it's rough. It, it, it's 
it's the toughest stage. People are going to make mistakes. People are going to make slip ups. It happens. It, it's beyond frustrating for anybody. Their run at one of these two competitions, getting themselves second place to W7M, was enough to get them here. When they make it, they can be ferocious. Apart from last SI, location yeah. of a bomb. where they got off to a bit of a bad start. They got off to a bit sto uh, bad start indeed. And uh, but this is also the thing about Virtus Pro, like either they're just like playing like the stars align, or they're just just not getting over the finish line every single time. Like they, they bring close matches. It's not like they get 7-0, 7-0, 7-0. it's always like the seven five eight seven. Welcome back. Here are the highlights from the map that you may well have just missed. This is Nighthaven Labs between Falcons and Lost, which, as you may well expect, Lost did come out in topping, given it was their map pick. Certain moments in the game for where Falcons definitely stood up to scrutiny a little bit, though, and showed Lost a rough time. But outside of that, I think it's pretty fair to say that expectations have been met so far, Tim. Yeah, we thought that Lost would come out on top, but I'll be honest, Falcons certainly gave them more trouble along the way than I thought they would do, especially on their map pick. Um, so coming into border, I look at it and I think, you know, there's definitely an opportunity here for Falcons. It's a little bit more of a simplistic map. They can just go in. They were winning a lot of the gunfights. That's where they were getting those big moments. So border may well suit them down to the ground. They don't need to worry too much about the strats, though. They can just fit in around each other as they need to and find those kills. A couple of the highlight players, I think, on the side of Falcons, just worth kind of giving some notes to as well. You know, Crips especially, you mentioned... Had a pretty good start, really lighting things up in the first few rounds. I think he was like 8-0 or something crazy. And then Valentino hit a wonderful 3-4k. to 4K. I forget which one it was to clutch out a big round for them. Looking at these stats, so the one thing that really catches my eye is entry. Maya, 0 and 4 on the entry. Not what you expect to see from one of your stronger players. And on the other side, overall, big net positive for the side of Falcons on the entry. Just couldn't quite convert it into round wins. They're going to have to really step up, you feel, um, coming into this next if they want it done in two. As I said, there's going to be much more of an opportunity for Falcons, so they're going to be looking towards those players, particularly Maya. Could be the difference maker. You know, if everybody else can sort of play to the same, same sort of level, Maya can come in and just add that little bit on top, then yeah. maybe Falcons do find it more of a struggle. Uh, but equally, you could flip it the other way and say if Falcons can go in there and maybe shut down Lobin as well. It be a map to be gained from, and maybe we see Skyscraper. That would be what really does it for them, is forcing this down to those gunfights. When you know Maya isn't really on form today, is the perfect map to be going to. When Lobin really is the player that you look at on the other side and say, he's the guy to be fearful of, deal with him. And things probably aren't quite as scary, but here we go. We're getting into it. Lost start off on the defensive side. Falcons on the attack. I expect we'll see most teams this competition, regardless of map, opting to start on the defense wherever possible. Which means whoever picked that map will be the one moving over to starting on the attack. I'm really curious to see as well, given the current state of the game, you know, two morality being a massive introduction to the defender side of things, albeit slightly nerfed recently, so not quite as oppressive as he once was. Does this massive lean in towards Solus, in towards Valkyrie, Fenrir, Tuberau, does it bring anything different to the game of Border, or is it still just a straight up shoot them up? Yeah, this is it. I mean, obviously, the banning phase is going to be the important part of answering that question to begin with. Do we see them make it through, or rather, who do we see make it through? Because, of course, mm. only two can be taken away. Um, Tuberat would be an interesting one to see in play here because, obviously, there is a couple of sort of key hard breaches that you would often expect to see. I'm thinking, um, you know, West Balcony, sometimes you might have the office side wall. Um, I'm thinking potentially getting into workshop, doing hatches if you're attacking onto a bottom floor site. Um, so there could be some real opportunities for Tubero to, to make life difficult. We're going to have the Twitch ban coming in first, followed by a Monty ban from Falcons. Mm, I don't hate it because Loss at the start of the last map, well, on the attacking side, were making use of Monty a few times over just to, I think, probably play the safe and steady game there and really leave Falcons a little bit rattled about, okay, how do we deal with this spearhead of an attack? And the army band coming on through, I think he's a great shout on this map border. You know, fame realistically for basically being able to see from one corner of it to the other across the top floor. There are soft walls everywhere. And his army obviously would have been a massive disruptor in that, being able to deploy those Kiba barriers that can be soft destroyed, but not by bullets. Does transform the way maps are often played. And Fenrir are going to come through as the fourth. So it does leave things like the Solus, like the Valkyrie, like the Tuberau available for defenders to make use of if they want to.
Yeah, Valkyrie and Solus being great shouts on border because about 90% of that floor is destructible. Um, there's pretty much just fountain and there's a little bit of uh, the floor behind the West Breach that isn't destructible. So you can have an absolute mm. field there from beneath as the defenders potentially. So I think we may well see um, a bit of a presence for at least one, if not both of those. Um, coming into this one, it is going to be Valkyrie that gets brought along. So as I say, not too much of a surprise there. No two Barrow on the board is available, but not going to be picked up by the defenders. It is an armory hold, so would have potentially been useful out on West Breach, um, but uh, not too worried about the about the hard breach in it would seem. Nah, for sure. And one thing I will also mention for Lars is they've leaned into the mirror an awful lot throughout these two maps. I mean, I say throughout these two maps, I've only just seen the first round start here, but the fact they're going straight onto it when it's left open, the same as we saw for the majority of rounds back on Nighthaven, just to me shows again it's that goal of trying to shut out the other side is sure there's no Azami available no problem we can still make use of a mirror to at least transform the way some of these sites are played you know these group of operators like castle the Azami the mirror referred to as architects by the Ubisoft development team the whole idea there being they change the way that sites function or the way that they are played by either side and just think that mirror will give them a little bit of a headache especially with that switch band coming in so just going to be opening up that CCTV window from distance to begin with. Uh, the big challenge for Falcons here is, and this is going to sound real stupid, getting inside the map. Um, yeah. But it's just so true on border. If you want a successful defense, you have to keep the attackers out of the map. Once they get inside, it's very, very difficult to win rounds then. So a lot of the gunfights that we're going to see, a lot of the challenges that we're going to see are going to be around the sort of periphery of the map. It's going to be preventing them getting established inside. Dots is going to take down Valentino as he starts to do exactly that perfect example of what i'm saying the fights will come at those boundaries preventing them getting in and that's where falcons are going to have to win those gunfights because otherwise they're not going to get established inside the map and there's going to be no <laughs> winning anything and leader he goes straight into dots and regrets it instant questions anyone will throw about this round is where are the drones yes there's a mute on side but you still have the ability to get these drones inside you've got brava for example or at least did have until leader went down Really should have had an idea that there was a player inside of office, and even if you don't see him, at least suspect that he's going to be there. Because when you bring along a glass like we've seen from Quips here, you're relying so heavily on that execute base focus with that operator that you need as many team members as possible alive when it comes to the end of the round. But everyone's dead basically as soon as they've even stepped towards the building. And if not for a little bit of cold feet coming out there from this player that's trying to step out, I believe it's Lobin. Probably could have had this round done and dusted already. Very aggressive from loss in the first round, but also. Very impressive. Lost look like they've really just woken up. Um, I was came out of Nighthaven and saying, you know, yes, they've got a good win, but they gave Falcons opportunities there. It was their map pick. Maybe not looking as sharp as we might have hoped. Maya was a little bit quiet. I look at them there, and I think that's what I expected to see from Lost against Falcons, just bullying them, just getting in there, right in their face. Um, you know, just little pocket players underneath a window getting a kill. If that continues, it could be over quickly. Could it could. Quick tech pause coming in here before we get into round two, which will be on vents and workshops, so bear with. We'll get back to into things very, very shortly. Not tons to go on in that first round, admittedly outside of. Yeah, Falcons weren't really able to get inside the building. They were bullied from second one and lost really just putting them to the, put them under pressure there heavily from the moment go. It does make me wonder if that's how the rest of this uh, half will play out. The answer really being yes. We said back at the start of things, 2-0, kind of the expectation if you're lost, I think. You can't make it to a Grand final, then really come and struggle in your first match against what essentially is like a, a standing team, or a pug group, as you might call it, a pickup group, because there are three subs on this team right now. Twister obviously would have done his best to rally the boys around and get them into fighting form, but still a very tall order against the last event's major grand finalists. Going to be heading back in then. We've got that tech issue sorted out nice and quickly. Defender and we're going to go to round two. As you said, Des, it's going to be ventilation and workshop this time around. Um, so Lost, once again, will be fighting over the top floor, you would expect. Going to be trying keeping them out of armory and archives in particular, which is the area directly above these sites. Uh, because, again, the vertical is so important. Once as an attacker, you've got that vertical control. What happens is you can flush all of the defenders out of the site, essentially. There's nowhere really safe for them to play anymore. Because, as you can see, it's all wooden floor. So you can rip the whole thing up above it. Um, so you can really make it difficult for them to play it inside. And once you've pushed them outside, particularly if you're looking um, at the ventilation area, which is the smaller room towards the bottom of the map, thank you very much. Um, once you're looking into ventilation, it 
kind of difficult to get angles in there from anywhere else Attackers on that bottom floor if you've been forced bottom. out of workshop. So it becomes very possible then to get a plant there. So we're going to see this battle over the top floor to begin with. Try and keep hold of that vertical superiority. As I suggested last round, I think Loss will take that to the boundaries. They're going to be right up to those entry points on the maps like they did last time. Just trying to bully Falcons and not allow them to get anything of a toe hold inside. Just like this. <laughs> Just like this. Here a barricade. Go and have a look at it. <laughs> Absolutely. Two globals coming in as well with the Lion, the Decay I'm just looking at that and thinking, well, that is pretty darn oppressive. It's going to be uh, tough for members of Lowe's to get out around the map, of course, too much bother, I think. Not enough that it's going to be something that shuts the round down, of course, but may restrict them more than what we saw in the previous round. Falcons, I think anything will be an improvement versus last round if they can even get inside the map because I think they have one player getting through a window and immediately die. That's about as far as they got. Looks is just going to be holding the angle there for the potential of a run out. Flash goes in. Is he going to follow it? Nope. Just looks to see if he forces anybody out of position. Maya manages to hold on for the time being. He's able to take down the Selma charge. Lobin manages to find Valentino as well. Five versus four. A good start from Loss once again. They know exactly where they are, the Falcons, but they just can't do anything about it at the minute. And Maya is holding on. He's taking two Selma charges out now. You can't just keep throwing them on the wall if you haven't moved Maya. It's just not going to work, I'm afraid. Moving Myers off in a pretty hard ask. Admittedly, in this series so far, not been the standout player that we used to see him, but things could change drastically as we move through the rest of the board. I didn't have to get involved in round one of the mirror. His teammates were the ones at every single window and doorway keeping him busy. Falcons are inside. They are inside of sight, and they've got the one for one as well, but can they turn it into more? The answer apparently is yes. Quibbs looking to pick up where he left off on the previous map. Cameraman putting him in the dirt though and saying, no thank you, no more of that. Showing the importance of the verticality here, Loss, they're quite happy to play completely off -site. The diffuser is in sight at the minute, and they're not too worried about it because this is all they're going to do. They're just going to watch for these verticals. Oh, you might just have missed your chance there, Dots, but he's got more Lovely. holes. He uses them, and he finds his kill. Two versus two as leader picks up cameraman from bathroom, but it is going to be difficult for Falcons if they can't get more kills above. It's all going to come down to leader and what he can do from fountain, but I think Dots knows that the push is going to come. He's got the support of Lobin. Two versus one. Two versus none has lost they managed to pick up the second round a promising sign though for me at least that we saw the attackers getting inside of sight relatively scot-free sure lost a player earlier on in valentino but outside of that it was a bit of a straight march forward and this is what we spoke about at the start of the day between walls and ssg as well and a very defender leaning meta seeing teams just try and say beeline for the site or let's try and force us into being a real scrappy death match can often be the way to get through a round and i feel their falcons are taking their own spin on that so it's good to see they've got that in the locker. It needs a bit of refinement, but at least they gave it a go and they progressed far more than they did in the previous round. But nice and early, twist us in for a tack timeout. Probably understandably saying, look, we're already down two and zero here, boys. We should be doing more. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think, again, there, it's for me, that last round is just kind of about, it's kind of just map knowledge. It's There's nobody on site. It's ventilation workshop. We haven't got top floor control. Like they should really be thinking and saying, it's, it's not possible for us to get the diffuser down here. There's no point in us just going into site. They've sent three of them into site to just sort of mill around. And then they've been picked up when they've then realized and thought, yeah, we're going to have to go and clear top floor. Yeah. Leader's gone up there. And as you see now, Lobin takes out one and then Dots takes out the other as they try to push up towards taking that top floor. You can hold ventilation and workshop without anybody on site if you've got the top floor you can do it easily and we've just seen that from loss they're quite happy to give up the ground yeah no problem come on in we'll just kill you from above um so yeah i'd expect falcons really to you know be seeing through that um and knowing that they need to go in and get that top floor sorted out Tito's. we love it Little black eye tucked away remember actually there's a time do you remember i want to say it was during well a few years ago i can't the tournaments either but teams used to not enjoy observers following them around on the valkyrie because <laughs> yeah. they were exposing all their black eye camera spots and then obviously, match replay yeah, became a thing, and now you can it's go and find irrelevant. it out for yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was one of those things I look back on and just think, ah, oh, back, back in the old days. Valkyrie cameras aren't about hiding them, it's not about keeping them, um, in my mind, keeping them sort of out of sight. It helps if it's not, you know, no, you don't want it directly in somebody's line of sight. Um, for me, I've always found it's about putting them in positions where it's dangerous to interact with them. Um, so, for example, I'll try and put them on walls behind where somebody's going to come in. So they're going to want to face towards Armoury, for example. So I'll put it on the rear office wall. So they'd have to turn the back on the danger area to deal with the camera. And I think a lot of the time those are the Valkyrie cameras that survive. Oh. Eight. 
a little bit, I think. I don't know. I mean, Lopin's found one from above, but everything's going ripping off in the site, and no one's really made a move on the side of Falcon. So as much as they've dumped a lot of critical utility and with the with the Ying obviously being available on this map, the first of the four that we've seen to date him, not really being used to great effect just yet. Even got the globals coming out. They really are throwing everything at it, but no one's making a move, Tim. Yeah, and I think I always look at it with utility. Um, you know, what value are you getting for it? If you send it in, you want something back. It's almost like an exchange. And right now, Falcons haven't really got anything back for all the utility. They've kind of just given it up for free. Like you say, they've sent Candelas in one after another. They haven't really got any uh, map control. Valentino does pick up Lobin. That is going to be helpful. They're going to want to take hold of office, but they're going to have to clear Meyer as well. It's really time for Meyer to be stepping up here. They could do with a couple of big kills from him here just to keep a hold of that top floor. He's going to be pushed from both sides. Might have his first opportunity for a good start. There we go. And that's the fuser down as well. But let's just drop that inside of archives. And now it's going to be potentially a real war to recover it. They've got to fight their way through. They don't have any information inside there anymore because pretty much all the drones are gone. It has gone from okay to now terrible. As leader is left in a one versus four. A little bit of a mistake there. I don't know why Bursa's going into, you know, un well, it's thrown, but they don't have information on where the players are. There's no one hot droning, for example. And they pay the price. A nice, easy close-up. And Maya, you asked for some kills, Tim. And he delivered. Are you satisfied? Certainly am. That was the exactly good. The Ace of Pyrites. 100%. You had Maya and Lobin <laughs> up on the top there. Lobin gets taken down. So it's now just down to Maya. He's being pushed by multiple people. If they get the kill onto Maya, different round. Falcons have a real opportunity to close it out. So Maya was a linchpin in that round. He got his kills, he kept his team in it, and then they finished with a plan, to be fair, and they were really on top of things. So well played from Maya, and he stepped up when his team needed him. Great round from Loss again, 3-0 now, and they've well and truly woken up. They look a little bit different to how they did on Night Haven Labs. It's a bit unfortunate for Falcons, because we said coming in, we kind of hoped that Border would be the better map for them. Uh, you know, a little bit more simple. You can get in there, don't have to worry too much about the strategy elements. We'll see if they do better once they get onto the defense but right now loss are just locking them out of this one they are so far i always say wait for that side swap because you never know what's going to happen in the second half of the map and we saw it a bit earlier on the ssg wall series we spoke about it a lot then except the last map the first two definitely gains of two halves and in this series not too sure remaining. it's going to look like map one or two from that series earlier on today much more like map three where i do think loss even going onto the attacking side could just run away with things as we get towards the back end of it Attackers are heading out to defuse a bomb. Here we go then. It's going to be armory for round four, and we're going to have uh, the circle of the sights once again as lost. They were able to complete the full defensive rotation. Lobin this time is going to be playing in that position that we saw Meyer in last time. He goes for a little run out of CCTV. He's got the support of the mirror window, but we're just going to play in there and again try to keep any of that gadgetry, keep anything off that mirror window. The Ash Charge will be able to deal with it though, and there's absolutely nothing that he can do about that. A recent update, um, of course, the um, Cali gadgets and the Ash gadgets are able to shatter the mirror windows. Anything that's classed as a drilling utility. Yeah, it's a drilling gadget, yeah. And there's a lot of questions in the case. Well, uh, what's a drilling gadget constitute then? I was like, hey, it's Ash like and Cali. Drilling in. Huh? Ash and Cali. That is literally only it, yeah. That's your drilling gadget. People are like, is Ophir not a drilling gadget? It's like, no, it's an ill pack. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Have you ever heard it drill? Like, it doesn't do that. So Lobin is still inside a CCTV. This is a position so far that Falcons have really struggled to deal with. But I like what Loss are doing. They're playing a lot of support. They've got the mirror window to support him from outside. That has now been dealt Swapping with. So next. it is a weak point for Lobin. But they've also got a cameraman playing in 90 under default camera to prevent that push into break room. So they're making it really difficult to move Lobin. Until they move Lobin, they can't continue with that west-sided push. No, and that's always the problem. Not to move Lobin, it sounds so easy as a sentence, but in reality proves to be incredibly difficult given the series that he's been having so far. Once, once again, though, he's put inside a sandwich behind a mirror window. Saw him doing work on that back in round one. Cameraman deletes Valentino as our first death in the round. Not quite having the star performer that he, performance that he was having on our last map. He was looking a little bit tougher. j -Lad finds one. Dash, immediate trade back on the other side. Good team play being shown by a loss. When they lose someone, there is always a response. Yeah, that's the cover that I was talking about. Just working there from office to cover his man in CCTV. They've got a really great understanding of the angles across this top floor. And Falcons are just really struggling to get themselves established. That was a good fight from Bursa as he manages. No, it was Leader, actually, who managed to get that final kill. And that was really well done oh, to clear out office. But cameraman just has never been dealt with. That's his second kill in the round and you just feel like there could be more coming from him. 
You know what I mean? In fact, he's gone so aggressive there onto the peak as well. Risky as all hell, because you don't know if uh, Quibbs is close. If he's sat behind the bending, a lot of the uh, bending, ventilation units sat outside on the south balcony, for example. But he gets the kill, and that is what counts. That removes any pressure on that side of the map against Loss. Obviously, they don't 100% know that. They can assume it. But it means Valkans might be a little bit light on the ground. Bursa finding a second, still giving his team away into this one. Maya puts leader into the ground, so it's Bursa to get a 4K, and it's not going to happen. Cameraman was always the problem there. Um, even in the, the 2v3, it was when they managed to pick up Lorbin and it became 2v2. Yes, they could team up on the person on site, but they always had Cameraman on the flank. So they knew as soon as they went to team up on Maya, Cameraman was going to hit them from CCTV. And so by holding the basic, almost the entirety of top floor, they had site, they had CCTV. So all they gave to Falcons was office. It made it really difficult for them because they couldn't really push in either direction because as soon as they tried to push cameraman, Maya's going to flank them. They have to take the fights 1v1 because they're so spread out. Um, so really well played from Loss. Really nice. 4-0 and they are charging through this one. It's a bit of a kicker for Falcons. They took that attack time out after just two rounds. So there's nothing to bring this half back except for the players themselves that they can work some magic. Did you see a mute jammer stats up with two of the cat can traps above it there working its way in towards site? Could yet fight someone in the backside a little bit later into the round. TVD on the side of Falcons. And with you, though, it feels like a bit of a loss runaway at this point. And Falcons unable to slow down that train. Obviously, the big change is going to come at the halfway mark when Falcons can get themselves on the defense. I don't know. Maybe they feel a little bit more stable then. Yeah. The problem is the game could almost pretty much be lost. Um, you know, if Loss can get a 6-0 half, are they not going to pick up one attack? I can't really see that being the case. Like I say, this isn't just about them defending well. Yes, they are covering each other well. Yes, they've got good crossfires, but they're just winning gunfights as well. They, you can see the confidence in them. They're running up to windows. They're taking, um, you know, challenges on that they might not otherwise know against different teams and you just feel like on the attack they're just going to at some point just aggro straight into sight and get around done. Comes the Ash again breaking another mirror window. I think Falcon's finally reading into okay these guys really really like mirror we need a response and Valentina being on the Ash is really the go-to in that case. Not strictly to be an entry either more just for the utility of being able to take things out as they've been doing so far. And there's the second one. So in fact both of those bleaching charges being used to clear out the mirror and then Valentino gets the mirror as well. What more can you ask for? That's exactly what they needed. Four versus three as they managed to keep pace with kills that come in. Maya is going to have to dip away from that position. He's able to stay there a lot longer last time. Cameraman it is that manages to find J-Lad though. And Maya, he's just shutting oh, up shop. He's going to get the reinforcement up. Cameraman's gone big so far on border over the last couple of rounds. And all of a sudden, Vulcans from a position of advantage, four versus three, find themselves two versus three and backs to the wall. It's going to be such a defining part of this competition, I think, for so many teams is how good is the team play. When things are so heavily defended, leaning with all the strong defenders in the game at the moment, it does come down to very aggressive and, and decisive pushes coming out of the attackers. And that isn't just solely a five-man execute. It can be playing for trades as well. And you've really seen this lacking in this round for me from Falcons as well as where Cameraman has had two separate 1v1s there, a good few seconds apart, and hasn't really been under pressure from the team as a whole. So Falcons have given away a pretty significant number of advantage. And now Loss, it looks like, might take that five-round lead. Yeah, this is it. You know, the fact that Maya's been able to escape with 15 life, get away from what should have been a, a certain death of a position, realistically, mm. but is still alive at the end of the round and survives. Final kill comes from underneath. Loss are using the entire map. Vulcans just look a little bit beaten at the minute. They do. They do. And it is sad to see as well, because you always want to see when you come into the World Championship, the best tournament of the year, for CG Sports. You always want to see teams playing at their absolute best. And look, sure, having three subs in, it's going to suck. It's not going to be you at your full strength. It's not going to be what you've been used to playing with all year long. I guess maybe some of the question marks would have been, you know, would a full strength Falcons been enough to bring down loss here? Maybe on the first map, I'd say, but at least with how things have been playing out here, no way. This is a very different loss that has turned up in map two. And the other thing to think about, it's still the first day of the competition. Still teams warming into it. You're not going to see every team at their best immediately. That will build as the week goes by. Yeah, this is it. You know, we've said this uh, a couple of times today, and it's something to certainly remember. Uh, I said it about Wolves as well. You know, that yes, they look good, but they look like they've got room to grow as well. And so you look at those teams, and really when you're thinking about who's going to win the whole thing, who's going to have a good run deep into the tournament, you've got to think about how that growth is going to happen as well across the tournament. And the more that it can, 
Um, obviously, the better for those teams. Lots of already shown growth within this matchup. This is kind of more what I expected from them on Nighthaven. It's kind of a flip reverse, really. I expected this on Nighthaven and maybe a closer match here on border. Uh, but really stepped up into it and it's probably the better way to do it to be honest because you go away on that high of a victory then where you've really run over somebody in that final map and it's going to put them in good stead for tomorrow Alrighty, Valentino coming out on the ramp no doubt working his way up towards the northeast side here wants to push his way in towards where Maya currently holds and if you remember last time round they couldn't deal with Maya very easily as a matter of fact he got rid of Bursa the Diffuser was down inside of Archives and it was just absolute chaos of Falcons from that point forward they had no information on that side oh that's C4 oh. so close to getting rid of Jalad as well not quite finishing him off but he's down to 10 HP and Maya stands as the raid boss of Archives it, Maya will not be moved just like wasn't in the previous round. We're just going to hold that tight angle through metal there. Uh, again, Lobin still alive, looking for that support. Maya knows they're oh, on the window. Man. Takes down Valentino, and that is advantage loss again. We could be staring down the barrel of a 6 0 half on the defense for the Brazilian side. A real kicker as well because it's the round that's gone. Yeah, you bring that along because you want to destroy every bit of floor possible above the site, and that's exactly what the ramp would have done for them. They've still got quips available playing on the uh, Buck here as well, able to do a similar sort of thing, but it's not quite the same. Is It's very satisfying seeing those ground gadgets roll through the map, and also, of course, creates a lot of noise, a very good distraction when a team wants to look to execute off the back of, say, an EE1D coming in. Lots of chaos, your phones are ringing, and that's when you try and capitalize, but that now at least has been lessened by the removal of the ramp. Just see the extra use of Valkyrie on the upstairs oh, there as well, using the Deagle to open up those vertical angles. So you don't have to have them there the whole time. You don't want to give them over to the attackers. But Maya decided that it was time to find those verticals. Lobin is going to oh. find Bursa, takes him down four versus three. And that is now Falcons battling. Jalad is also on very low health as he tries to move his way through. This is not looking good for Falcons right now. 50 seconds left to go. Again, the nod given to Sub stepping in. Urso has died a good few times this half with the diffuser in hand in. Not so much precarious spots, it's in the site, but the problem now is it is unrecoverable. You need to take control of the main site before you can look towards bathroom, for example. So options have now been taken away from Falcons, and Lost can just sit and play around the diffuser, as they're doing wonderfully. Glad is down. Crips is the last one left alive. He's being swung on from three different angles. It is a misery, and it's a 6 0 half. Well, now is the point that we have to ask the question. Are we going to see our first 7-0 map on the first? I'm just checking, actually, if it's on Fresh's uh, bingo card. It is on Fresh's bingo card. I had a look at it earlier. I can confirm. Um, we don't like to mention it, you know, prior. At the end of the day, teams can turn it around. They can come back. But it would be remiss of us not to point out that it is a definite possibility. A loss of getting onto the attack. Yes, it will be against the Falcons' primary site. They can definitely lock this down. They can definitely get a round or two on the defence. Do I think that the comeback is on? I think there's a long way before we start talking about that yet. The way Loss have been playing, they've been running over Falcons here so far. They've not really been in this matchup on border. And so you look at it and think, surely there's going to come a site where Loss just get themselves in and get the job done. You know, whether, however they go about doing that. But the question now is all about that 7-0. And it looks like it's very firmly on the way. Unless Falcons have got anything to say about it. In round seven, Armory and Archives are going to start in. Flat onto the Oryx. You've got the mirror coming out as well. They've clearly seen Loss have used it very effectively. And figure, well, why not try and do exactly the same ourselves? The one thing that's going to be a bit frustrating, I imagine, for these Falcons players is it sucks to get battered like this. We've yeah, all been there where you just get completely wiped. And it's like, man, like, I it think can be a real... <laughs> They've got the bonus that they can kind of write it off. They, you know, it's like, yeah, we've got yeah. three subs. It's, it, it's, we knew it was a potential. We knew it might happen. You know, it's not going to be necessarily the same as for a team playing at full strength and getting beaten. Yeah. And the other side of it is you are again. That's not, not a good start. <laughs> no, certainly not ideal. At least something comes back there with Dots being taken down on the other side of things. So the bad, I guess they're like the, it's not the end of the world because you'd rather kind of get battered by one of the top two teams in this group, you know, Sonics and realistically Lost being the top two teams. The other teams you've got to face off against are Fury and Scars. Beatable as long as you can address the problems that you've seen in this game so far today. Down to a three versus three. Still lots of potential, but Tim, only been 45 seconds in it. It's been a bloodbath. Yeah, Falcons are fighting hard for their one round here. They want to make sure that they're not going to be the first team to... They don't want to be the bingo cards. Zero. They certainly <laughs> don't. Um, but Loss, uh, again, making it tough for them. They're always getting the first kill. Um, and then it's 
There you go. They're always getting that first kill, and it's Falcons that are having to respond. Cameraman knows that there's one inside of break room now. He's getting peppered at this point, his leader. He tries to fight back. They're just going to push him from multiple angles here. He's going to need support, or he's going to die. They open up the wall. Oh, there he goes. One, Two versus one, and it's all up to Quibs to try and hold on. He's been an absolute blind. It's been an incredible player back on night, Evan, but he's had a bit of a stinker here so far at three and six. To be fair, the whole team has. Loban and Dash might just be a step too far for him to dismantle. A minute and 20 to go. He's the defender here as well. Flash comes through. On go the shades, and he can deal with anything. Don't look too brightly at the sun. In comes a player, finds one for himself. But again, great team play. Decisiveness coming out from Loss as they take a 7-0 and take their first series. 2-0. Yeah, Lost there on board are certainly looking much more like the team that we saw in Atlanta. Absolutely clinical. Yes, it was against a team with a bunch of standings. There are going to be much sterner tests coming Loss's way. But it's like I've said before, Des, you can only beat the team in front of you. And that is, if nothing else, it's a confidence builder for Loss. They come in, they've got themselves running, they've got a win on the board. It was a good win, and now they can build from that. So, you know it may be the differentiating factor for them in later matches as well. They might now actually be a tougher opponent to face than they otherwise would have been. And the way I always look at it, you know, I spoke about the series that we cast earlier on as well, Wolves versus SSG. Wolves definitely had a bit of a shaky start to their series, didn't look too good on map one, but grew as the series went on. Regardless whether it's an absolute steamroll, your first official is now out the way. You've had yeah. that chance, you've settled in, you played your first official, cool, we understand now. There are things we can start building on that aren't just scrims, this is now from an official. And there will be things they can go away and look at. On Nighthaven, definitely some things to clean up on border. Maybe really not doing it was a 7 0. No, not at all. I mean, I'm looking forward to seeing more of Lost now. I want to see them tested. Uh, yeah. You know, Night Haven was pretty close, Border was not. I just want to see them tested against a full strength side now so we can get a proper gauge. Um, you know, yes, it might be a nice little foundation for them. It's a good little win. Get it on the board, get yourself rolling. First official out the way, like you say. But for me, let's see them against, you know, a Sonic. So let's see them really pushed. That's going to be the hard one. But again, not forgetting that they've got them to play against Scars. Could easily cause an upset Scars or two in this group as well. Scars won't be an easy team to play. Yeah, Sonics will be the one that everyone looks at and says that is the big one that we're really excited to see how it plays out. I believe that game is one we're casting tomorrow, is it not? Yes. Second game tomorrow. So that's certainly casting Sonic. Yeah. So obviously we've seen we've seen what comes out of these boys today. As you say, that test tomorrow I think will be the exciting one that really tells all about how Loss's tournament could look to blossom from here on forward because when we think about the potential winners of this competition everyone's saying it's probably a Brazilian team they're probably going to be three if not four teams in the top four of this whole SI given it's on home soil the loss has kind of been the, the one left out to the side that no one's really talking about and I do hope we see that change as the tournament goes on and they go from strength to strength yeah absolutely that um, you know this is the first couple of days are all just about finding out and that's why I love it it's like you know I've been watching the games all day I've seen apart from the ones that are on the other stream whilst we cast I've seen everything else um, and it's I just I say it every year I love the chaos of it I love just right first day or two right how's everybody looking where's the growth where's the problems you know who's going to do what against who um and that's again loss is another team that i was looking forward to seeing so um you know maya came in good game we said that it could have been the difference maker i think it was maya stepped up and yeah. you know put some numbers up as well and it really was just that bit that gave them you know the extra extra yard that they needed that's it. I mean, Lobin as well back on that first map. Real big standout play. You've kind of seen the two strong elements there across either map. Well, Lobin still didn't have a terrible second map. He was the real difference maker on map one. Map two, it was the Maya show. And then you've got Dots and Dash kind of dancing around that and chipping in their own kills here and there quite consistently across both maps. Yep. It does show that rounded nature that you need from teams where if one player's not having the best map, someone else can still step up and make the difference. Yeah, exactly that. And it is that difference. Like, you know, we saw Nat Evan Maya very struggling, uh, you know, very few kills, struggling to get involved. Um, and it's a close game. Then they step up. You've just got that extra 20%. Absolutely. Well, I think that's us done and dusted. Unless we have map plus production, you'll be able to tell me that one. If not, that will be here in a second. So we'll wait on for that one. There you go. We will. We'll wait for those two. Shan't go Talk anywhere. Five minutes? Five seconds, maybe. Yeah. Shirts, maybe. Yeah, you know, Lax said something really sweet earlier. He was just like, yeah. oh, it's like, you know, you, I saw you wearing these like short sleeve flowery things before. He's like, I've got some now. I was just like, ah. Oh. Lax, Lax is a great hype, man. Lax is, uh, <laughs> he, he comes into the team and he's always like, oh, you're looking so sharp. You're looking so, and he's like, he's one of them people that really bigs you up before you go on. He looks beautiful Real today. Life. He's got a w wicked, like, like pink little like short sleeve top on. I was just like, that looks so cool. Yeah, he's, he's just a cool guy. He is. They're all a good bunch, to be fair. Everyone's a good bunch. They are.
Here are the stats Ill. from that whole match. In case you just needed a reminder, this is not the one we just did. This was from the series earlier on. Wrong players on there, but the logos are right at the very least. We got halfway there. We'll get that corrected for you and back up, no doubt, in a few there moments. We there we go. Uh, not quite stats in there just yet, either in some places as well. Let's take it down, production. Get it off. Get it off. Don't worry about it. Don't look too long at the sun or it might burn your eyes. We'll get there in the end with it, I'm sure. There we go. We've got it. We've got it. No, it's not. Just skip it. <laughs> It's the first day. Things are allowed to go wrong, okay? <laughs> it wouldn't be SI. Either way, look, I can tell you what the stats were, mate, because I've got them absolutely memorized. If I had to put KD in a cell for pretty much all the players for last, it would be jagged, 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 jagged on the other side. Yeah, not so good, not so good, not so good, not so good. Yeah, Dumb. That's fair. Who needs numbers when you've got numbers? The There's the stats. That's it. Snap man. Well, it needs to be. <laughs> we'll roll with it. There's still one more series to go here on B Stream. Let's not forget today. And there's also more going on on the A Stream. So don't forget to tune in. Still plenty more action today. We'll catch you guys tomorrow, though, in a little bit.